Y esa niña no se aguanta Ey, quiere todo porque tú sí sabe a Fanta Ey, we're back, we're back On a Tuesday, the Every Night Nights podcast Y'all already know what's up And I'm here with Ivana the Tattoo Artist And Veronica the Psychic Healer What's up, what's up And those are big titles right there You Taco feel me? You Tuesday Snow the product, by the way I'm just the product. I'm like, compared to their name, I'm just the product. But um, Ivana did tattoo me right here. And you know what's crazy and I haven't told you? People that see this tattoo, like wherever I go, they're just like, that's Ivana. Like right away, you know? And I think that's, that's so awesome. I like that. I'm like, yeah. Sometimes like, because I'll randomly get like little, some of these are like in the moment. I walk in somewhere mm -hmm. and get something right real quick. And the moment like I'll take off my jacket or something, they'll be like, oh, you, you have real work. I'm like, oh yeah. Because they'll see, you know what I mean? And they'll know about like Boo Boo and Ivana and like different people. And I love that actually. I love wearing this art as a way to like, you know what I mean? Like people see what's up and like my journey. And I've gotten some, I've gotten some, some weird ones <laughs> that I'm like, okay. Like I have baby Yoda on my leg mm -hmm. and now i'm trying to get my whole leg done and now i don't know what to put next to baby yoda like because on my back of my leg is selena but then there's baby yoda on like kind of the front so i'm like ooh, like i'll help know. you with that for sure really yeah, oh yeah oh, it's i'll lit. check it out it's lit and how do you go from selena to baby yoda what do you put in the middle like maybe like walter mercado or right like, i'm like how Juan do we or something? some sort of entertainment <laughs> yeah <laughs> let's Let's just, yeah, exactly. Somebody help me figure transition. out how do I transition and we will make the whole leg happen. But um, no, and okay, Psychic Healer, you showed up. I'm not gonna lie. This is, to me, a little intimidating. And, and, and I told you, I was like, I'm gonna learn because, you know, you're gonna obviously teach me a lot and you've written books and you're very like, so I, I hey. And she showed up <laughs> with mezcal and shroomies. So you already know, I'm like, okay, all right. Just I'm in just case, just to clear the air, you know? Just yeah. to set up the mood. Set okay. the mood. And I had heard of you when I was getting tattooed. I remember she like I had this heavy energy and she said right now, she's like, you look a lot better. You look a lot lighter, mm -hmm. everything like that. And I'm like, it was a very hard time in my life. So I remember her being like, you know, maybe my wife can help you and stuff. And I was like, yeah, I was like, at this point, what, you know, yes, I'm willing to anything because I feel terrible, <laughs> like miserable. Like my life just had fallen apart completely. And um, but, you know, I've, I've gotten a lot better, but maybe still, you know, you, we always need some help. We're always I'm in a very specific place now where I'm ready to take whatever my next steps are. So I think I'm very, um, I'm very accepting to whatever the universe brings and we, it's brought us together. So here That's we are. That's cool. Yes. Well, thank you for having me. And I'm an expert at everything that can go wrong because oh. that's what's happened in my life. I've picked up the pieces and this is what the pieces look like at this present time. But, uh, yeah, the, so I, I wrote several books about my life. Um, one of the first one, I think you have this one. Yes. Yes. My life, my story, God, you owe me. Because yes. I always looked up to the sky as I was growing up and I was like, you fucking owe me because it was always messed up. My life has always been messed up. And then this one is the most current one that represents this. And it's called Holy Bleep. I'm a bleeping psychic yeah. because I couldn't believe it. Like yeah. after all the shit that I went through now, God, now I'm a psychic, like a psychic <laughs> healer. Now you're going to throw this on me. So this one's a comedy and it just kind of pokes fun at everything that I do. That's because dope. I'm a number one skeptic. Yeah. Like if I would have seen this even four years ago, I would have been like, oh, no, that's brujería. That's like that's uh, that's not, that's I'm not fucking with that. But this just is it's just uh, represents my ancestors. The feathers that I that I brought with me today are uh, tools that I use during my sessions. And uh, I, I write about them in this book. These these are the tools that I use in my session. And um, these are just, uh, you know, they represent my ancestors. As I said earlier, these I use for prayers and for whenever I'm sending prayers up to to God and to Holy Holy Spirit. This is just Palo Santo and it cleans the air. This is my uh, my knife that I use to clean energy. Oh, nice. <laughs> but uh, they're, they're just some tools, you know? They're, they're friendly. They're friendly. And, and I will be completely honest with y'all. I'm very like, like I'm, I'm willing to learn, but I, I don't know very much about any of this. Um, but I, I, we've obviously all, you know, especially in the in like nowadays and, and then on TikTok, everybody knows we talk about like energy and like, you know, all cleansing. And I know a couple of people that like they're constantly, you know, they have their baths and their things that they do and everything. And I'm like respectful of everybody's culture and how they grew up. Obviously, growing up very Catholic, we a lot of times, you know, like are like, oh, like my mom mom would be like super scared so to me you know i'm going along my journey and i'm like mom like chill let me yeah. you know explore and see all these things but um yeah we we are gonna have an interesting podcast today we have the day ones it's live right now for the day ones it's gonna be pre-recorded for everybody else so we will be dropping it later and ito i hope you also are willing to learn and stuff and uh, i do want to hear about your story because i do okay. know you had an in, in a 
just an interesting story. So go ahead and tell us about that. Well, I'm going to sip the mezcal you brought. Please, it's so good. It is. So I was born in Juarez. Juarez, Mexico. It's a border town with El Paso, mm -hmm. one of the deadliest towns in the world, actually. And I'm the oldest of 56 grandkids and 52 great grandkids on my mom's side alone. Oh, damn. And I'm pretty much the one of the few ones that got out safely. Yeah. Uh, my mom abandoned me when I was born. She, she, you know, she had her own life and, and she was young. And my grandmother raised me. At six years old, my mom came back and kidnapped me and smuggled me in the back of a car. And I was smuggled into El Paso, Texas. And there I began a life of sexual abuse and horror. And this is what I write about in this book. Oh, man. And it also details all the memories that I have. And people are like, Ronica, how do you remember that? I can barely like remember yesterday. And I think that I remember so much trauma because it needed to be told. It needed to uh, be told in a way that inspires people to forgive. So everything that they did to me, I forgave them and I don't hold them accountable for anything. It's just a story that hopefully inspires other people that uh, experience sexual abuse. So that's the first part of my book. That's the first part of my life. And the second part of my life is um, I came to California and I became addicted to crystal meth. I've been a crystal meth addict most of my life. And I loved every minute of it until I didn't. Until I looked in the mirror one day and I was like, oh my God, like what the hell am I doing? Like I looked up to God. I always look up to God because that's my only constant in my life has been God. I have a belief in God. I was raised Catholic, baptized Catholic, then raised Christian, but it was all a convoluted mess of religion. And um, But the only thing that was constant was God. So I looked up to God one day and I said, I, I've had enough. I, I can't take any more of this drug. And I realized that I was just surviving on drug because I was trying to survive from all the memories of my fucked up childhood. Yeah. And um, I've been clean for 11 years. And in Did that, you? yeah, thanks. Yeah, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> Um, yes, I, I gave up drugs this morning. Oh. <laughs> just kidding. I'm dead. <laughs> no. Uh, yeah, so I've been clean for 11 years. And um, just about three years ago, mm -hmm. uh, if she wouldn't have been with me and if the people that have been around my life wouldn't be there, I wouldn't be able to make anybody believe me that I'm a freaking, oh, my God, I'm having psychic abilities. Oh, my God. So the way it started is right after COVID, Ivana and I were on a trip to oh, Alaska. It was Alaska first yeah. when I started getting all of these like th this like weird vibes about water and oh, yeah. and we were we went up hiking in Alaska to this glacier and we were the first ones allowed back after COVID and I was attracted to water and like sprinkling water on me and like doing all these weird movements and then after that we went to Galapagos and in Galapagos again I was attracted to hike up this volcano and do this water thing and we came back to the to the ship and the the server came up to me and he came on this side and he was like giving me my plate and I looked up at him and I said hey you need to be with Angelica and this is the first time I've ever seen this guy and he looked at me and I felt like my mouth was like moving like this and he goes you know Angelica and I was like uh, no, but you guys need to be together. And I'm what? looking at him like this. And he goes, She's, is she your room attendant? And I was like, no, but you really need to consider just be with her. So he takes off, turns white. And I turn to Ivana and I'm like, babe, am I drunk? <laughs> She's like, not yet. And I'm like, when this guy... <laughs> I feel that. We were going not there. yet. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that night. But we literally just came to a restaurant. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. It was date night. So, I feel that. <laughs> so I'm, the, like, I'm about to be drunk. Right? No, I'm but <laughs> so the guy comes back and he comes around to Ivana's side of course now he's afraid <laughs> so I said when he comes back ask him what I told him so he comes to her side and she's like what Veronica tell you mm -hmm. And the guy's Dead. like, oh, is she, is she your room attendant? Is, is Angelica your room attendant? And she was like, no. So then I start talking to him about their life together. And he's like, you know what? Yes, we were supposed to meet tomorrow. And I was like hesitant. And we've been keeping it from, from everybody because we're not supposed to date each other. But I'll, I'll go ahead and meet her tomorrow. So we look at each other and I'm like, what the, what was that about? <laughs> And we just kind of like... We just brushed it off. We didn't talk about it we, for like Because it was so time. weird, yeah. right? We brushed it off and we didn't talk about it. We went back to the to the room and just ignored it. Mm -hmm. And from there, it just took off. Oh, shoot. I could see it. I could see people's faces. I could read it in their moles, in their hair, in their shirts, in their skin, in their wrinkles. It's almost like I had an antenna just open up. And I didn't know how to shut it 
off. Mm -hmm. I didn't know. Like sometimes it would be so intrusive. I would be looking at people and I could read their mind and I could read, you know, what the guys oh, shit, are thinking. Are you doing it right now? Oh, no, I know how to do on. it now. <laughs> <laughs> like, turn it off. Turn it off. <laughs> I couldn't. I couldn't turn it off, and it was so yeah. weird, right? I mm -hmm. just recently ran into somebody that met me during the time when it was happening, and she was like, "Oh my God, you're so much better now because you're not like this." Like I would scan people, you know. Oh, shoot. And now I know how to turn it off. Thank God it's like three years ago that it started. And now that I've honed it and I, I'm, I'm still learning about it, obviously. But now, now I know when I'm on and when I'm off. Mm -hmm. So That's tight. Yeah, so what really other cool. crazy, like what other like experiences that you're just like, hey, yo, like this was crazy. Like what the, like that you've like said. Every reading is crazy. So then, so then, okay. So I started being psychic, right? And then I started tapping into energy, but on its own. Like it's nothing that I did. Like I didn't say, oh, I'm going to be a psychic healer. I had a thriving business. I was doing well. And one time after this, after this one, the one that really struck me is we were going to a bar and we were hanging out, right? And Ivana was hanging out with her boys, drinking and everything. And I sat down and I sat down next to this guy and I look over at him and I'm in a foreign country. We are in Europe and I don't know the language. So I'm forced to just shut the fuck up, which is something that I don't know how to do. <laughs> like I love to talk. Mood. <laughs> <laughs> I just love to talk, you know, I have a lot to say. So I look over at him and I'm like, oh my God, you can't leave. You can't leave. And out of all of this tiny little bar in the middle of nowhere, he's the only guy that understands English. Oh, wow. Everybody speaks Slovakian. Yeah. Oh, shoot. So he's like, huh? And I said, you can't leave. If you leave, your mom's going to die. Like she's struggling from cancer bad. And he was like, huh? like he starts crying and, and like, like loses it. And he's like, oh my God, I was going to, I was going to leave. And then I said, you know, um, Something started coming down and I started drawing. I said, give me your arm. So he gives me his arm and I start drawing this tree of life and explaining something. I, I didn't even understand. Most of the time I don't understand. And once it's done, I don't even remember. Like people oh, will come up and say, hey, you, you said this and you said that. And I don't even remember sometimes. Oh, so I started drawing the tree of life and what is giving him some kind of answers he was looking for. And he lets go of me and he goes like this. And he has a tattoo of what I just drew the tree wood. of life oh wow on his other arm and then he starts panicking and i could smell his blood whoa I, hey yo <laughs> what you mean <laughs> like smell i could, his blood i could smell his blood sometimes i could smell or i could taste and this is when it started happening i could smell his blood and i and to calm him down i was like no no listen like you have a different type of blood than than all of your family and he was like oh he's began to calm down because he said yes i do yes i do and i was able to calm him down because of this so he was able to talk to Ivana and they communicated in their language and he was able to get a good reading. But after that, it just took off even more. I started communicating through feathers, getting answers through feathers. They would tell me exactly what the person needed because I started asking God for help. Like I freaked out. Yeah. I freaked out really. One time I was in the shower and I was like, oh my God, God, is this from the devil? Am I, am I like a bruja? <laughs> you know, am I like a curandera? Like that doesn't go well with me. Like that's not cool. Like that's not what I want to do. And I heard from Holy Spirit say, everybody has this gift. We all are psychic. We all have that gift. Some call it intuition. You just don't practice it. You don't practice, practice it as humans. It's like Arnold lifting weights. Like, yeah, his muscles are huge because he practices. But most humans don't practice listening to their intuition. So so that's when I began to accept it a little better, right? Mm -hmm. But I think the most interesting part about this was when you start getting stuff from people, like sickness or headaches and all of that stuff. That was like a whole other level. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, so shoot. I can feel yeah. when I'm going to go have a reading, I can feel the people if they are having, um, like if they suffer from migraines, I will get a really bad migraine or if they have diabetes or high blood pressure or whatever illness they have, I will feel it in my body physically. She will experience it before the session. And oh, once she has the client and she will say it, she will describe exactly how it feels, what is it, where it comes from. It where just, it is. It just oh, comes. Yeah. Or if they have illness of their, of their liver or their organs or whatever, as soon mm -hmm. as I go like this and I can touch it, I will know exactly where it is and how we need to proceed to help them feel better. Oh, shoot. I'm like, how's your lower back feeling? <laughs> my bad. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. You're oh, good. All right, bad. Hey, it's lit. Yeah, yeah, you're good. No, so listen. Then I started talking to freaking animals. Oh, my God. Dude, I do that. I mean, but I don't really talk to them. I just talk at them. <laughs> like you. <laughs> Like, no, like I started having animal readings. What? Can I bring you a chicken right now? <laughs> no, Pancho. I want to know if Pancho hates me. That's all I want to know is if Pancho fucking hates me because I think my dog hates me. Like, I think he loves me, but like, I think he uses me like while I'm around. Like, he's like, okay, like you'll do. But then he shows me that he loves two other people way more than me. And I'm like, 
you know, maybe maybe they should have him. Maybe they should take him. Maybe I should be free. But I think that your dog has a problem with his hearing. <laughs> I'm dead, really? I think he has a problem with his hearing. Poncho. On this side. He's me. Which dog though? It might be it might be Bash. He got he always got problems with his ears too. There's yeah. there's a dog here that has problems with his hearing and it really hurts him. Like it sometimes the pain goes down to his little uh here. Oh we did take Bash to the vet and they took out a bunch of stuff out of his ear. What are those little things that they took out? Pull-ups? No, the wheat. You know those little wheat plants that, like, oh, they fly? Really? Yeah, like, he had, like, a bunch of those stuck in his ear. Ouch, yeah. It was, yeah. He was, well, well, maybe now he can't hear. Maybe that's why he stares at me. Bash just stares at me all the time. He just be like, and I'm like, what do you want, man? You good? He but, probably sees all the energy around you. Maybe, yeah. He was my ex's dog. He's not my dog, but, you know, I try to be a good step, step parent. Step, yeah. Yeah, step mom. Yeah, I'm like, you know, it's just us, buddy. He's not coming back, bro. Thank God. Right? <laughs> hey. Okay. <laughs> yeah, those things. Oh, yes, yes. Those things. Are really? Still. Yeah. He had some I of those. Yeah. I can but see But this how. is cool. You know, there's a lot of peacocks around here. The other day we got invaded by peacock. Yeah, they just came on the ranch. They just showed up random. These feathers are, uh, I just use them. Like, I just started using all this shit without any training. Like, it just starts coming to me because I ask God for help because it's still kind of weird, you know? Yeah. I do a lot of online sessions too, so I ask God to help me so that I'm always delivering the right message. And I don't want to, you know, I, I like to talk a lot of shit, but when it's during the reading, I like to make sure that it's something that's going to help people leave with a healthier state of mind, not like all messed up, you know? Yeah, yeah, and, for sure. And with the age of like spiritual work and, and all of this psychic ability this is there's so much of it going on right now that there's a lot of people that really do take advantage of others you know so i want to make sure that it's always in tune and it's always in good intention yeah somebody look woke santa he's been a member he's one of my fans that has been the fan for the longest um and he said i have a question what are your insights on the total eclipse on april 8th i don't know any of this stuff like i don't know about Oh, signs yeah. i don't know like uh aquarius or, or libra like ivana knows all of this i don't know any of this i i just know what comes down you know yeah she's medium so she's pretty much that connection between spiritual and physical world mm. so sometimes like a physical veronica like phys physical person she doesn't know these things but when she connects to higher power she's just transferring them to people mm. right like you're using higher power for this the way and what signs are you because she said you know about signs what I, sign are i'm you? libra okay and you aquarius okay what are cancer you? libra Virgo. I'm a Cancer. Um, yeah. Yeah, okay. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know about uh, these eclipses. Which is cool. I mean, that's also one thing that probably people like knowing you know what you know and what you don't know, you don't know. You know what I mean? Like not just because yeah. you know this, like you're going to know, you know, that's cool. I use the word no. That's got to be like a Guinness Book of World Records. How many times I just use the word no. <laughs> but um, no, that's yeah, that is super intriguing. And um, I mean, when it comes to your story, because you said the first part of your story was, you know, where you were born, what you got into. And then how did you did you just stop cold turkey? I like, stopped cold turkey really after like was it years or like it was most of my life i started with coke i love coke my coke years were some of my favorite years of my life hey you, hold on we are not endor <laughs> endorsing <laughs> sorry sorry no no they were, they were really no, bad yeah no but, no but i yeah, tell the truth story i because, do yeah, like of course i was highly functional i loved my life back then you know and uh it got me through the through the bad years of memories and and uh what is it called back fla or back uh hot flashes like, something. like flashes back, yeah, yeah flashes. you know of, of the abuse it was horrible what i went through so being high was a way of coping and then getting into crystal meth was just my next step after cocaine and i did it for many years you know i'm 48 now and i did it most of my life yeah so yeah one day i just quit i had enough i was having really bad schizophrenia I was by myself. I was homeless. I lost everything. You know, I went from working with the mayor of Long Beach, being her right hand person on drugs and then just being homeless, living in my okay. car, you know, and, and then you just stopped cold turkey. I just stopped. Did it hurt? I don't remember, really. I don't I don't know if I shut it down or what happened. But I know I because I used to run on the beach all the time, too. So I was running constantly and sleeping. So I know that it went for a couple months living in and out of my car in hotels and just trying to get through. I was going through a horrible divorce. So that that probably just got me through that. But I don't remember anything hurting, really. Damn. And then, okay, so now you're clean. And then how do you pick up the piece? Fuck, even at my lowest, I was the baddest, you know? I was the baddest bitch. I just had balls. Like, even then, how do I pick up the pieces? So I was going through a terrible divorce and just slowly got back into just the the rhythm of life i think i applied for a job at a uh, 
I always lied my way through interviews, by the way, because I'm, I'm a dropout. I'm a high school dropout. I didn't have education, but I always lied my way through. So I lied my way on an application for a um, University of Health Sciences, which was a medical nursing college. Oh, shit. And I got a job there and mm-hmm. I met some cool people. I met a cool guy and we became roommates. And then we got an uh, apartment in Long Beach. And then from there, I just collected a good group of people because when you're vibrating at a different frequency, that's the people you're going to attract, you know? So I was vibrating different and I attracted a cool group of friends. And from there, it just step by step, life just started switching. And whenever I quit drugs, I also made a promise to God. I said, if I throw this bag of crystal meth, which is my life, if I throw it in the toilet i expect that you are gonna help me and it did it switched my life it switched my life around dang now there's that was yeah that is dope i'm sorry like i that's how you know i'm my adhd because then i started thinking like where did the meth go and then i'm like there is some fish that was wilding for a week Mm -hmm. they had a party under in the underneath the sea (laughs) (laughs) sebastian was fucking wilding for a bit but they were swimming mad fast fast like a nascar no, but that's good. Um, that I mean, I like when you hear the word like when you hear meth and you hear addiction, you you wouldn't think somebody can just cold turkey just you know what I mean. So like that does take you. You're right. Even at your lowest, you were a bad bitch because to be able to just be like, well, now this is it. Yeah. And then be like, and I'm gonna get a job and I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna do that. It is inspiring to know that you can really go. You know, like we all have our ups and downs, but goddamn, you've had some very ups and very downs. Yeah, like. totally, totally. But you know what? I was always alone. So what am I gonna do? Like. Where am I going to go? Where am I going to turn to? I, th- there was never an option to seek for help because I didn't know what help looked like. Nobody ever helped me. Yeah. You know? And how'd you get here? Wait. I mean, like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I'm like, I'm like, now I'm in your journey. Okay. So now we, okay, we're running up and down the beach. You stopped drugs. You, you lied your way onto this thing. And you now got a job and you got a circle of friends. And then what happened? So then I met a good group of people, right? And one of them was um, my, I was engaged to this guy that is a qua- was a quadriplegic. He just passed away last year. And he gave me, he set me up with some really cool life tools. You know, he was, he was the first one that told me, hey, Veronica, listen, like you didn't have a good upbringing. Like you've just been surviving. Like you were using these drugs to help you cope. Like you can take all that shit and just file it, file it in the back. Don't think about it now. Just file it and just keep going. Focus on your health, focus on your, on your diet it and just get through it find something that you want to do with your life and then so I started a business for it with medical tattooing and uh, tattooing the face because I needed to get scared I needed something to scare the shit out of me because all my life I was scared I was scared as a child I was abandoned I was scared of abuse I was scared of sexual abuse I was scared of my parents I was scared shitless so then drugs were the only thing that kept that fear you know that that uh that rush of the cocaine and the crystal were a comparison to that fear that kept yeah. me going. So tattooing somebody's eye li- eyelid was comparable. So oh, I started shit. tattooing faces. And from there, I ran into Ivana in the elevator one time. And she was like, hey, can you tattoo my eyebrows? <laughs> oh, that's dope. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, at that moment, I was like, I had just read the book, The Secret. And I never heard of this concept before. So I ordered myself some business cards. And at this point, I, su- I sucked <laughs> ass in tattooing. Oh, my God. But I thought I was the baddest. And I was looking at my business card all the time and saying, oh, I'm so good. I'm the best tattoo artist in the world. And I'm the best. And here I am. Um, I run into her. And she's like, oh, will you tattoo my and I looked her up and I was like oh my god I'm the best you know I'm the <laughs> best it's like tattoo royalty wants me to tattoo her eyebrows and at that time I had sub- I had replaced drugs with alcohol I started drinking a lot and partying I had a really good life you know I was at the yacht club every day and just pounding those martinis and she wasn't down with it she was like you know what like this is I live a clean life like I'm, I'm not I'm not good with that she's not gonna fly with me yeah I told yeah. you straight away but I wanted her so bad you know <clears throat> I'm dead so that's weird so that, was that your line your line was can you tattoo my yes, that was, was your way. Way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was that was my way I met her in elevator oh, and oh, can you imagine <laughs> I met her in elevator and she was like from head to toe beautiful gorgeous completely my type and I'm like, what the fuck? Like, who is this? You You're know? like, can you tattoo my eyebrows? <laughs> and then I heard what she does, you know, because we used to live in the same building. And uh, somebody told me, it's like, oh, yeah, she, like, she, she does this and that. I'm like, oh, perfect. So next time I met her in the elevator, I'm like, oh, I heard you do, you know, the hospital <laughs> tattooing. Can you do my eyebrows? But I don't give a shit about it. I don't want to get it done, you know. She's afraid of needles, by the way. I have a friend. Um, <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, so I made an appointment. I, I made an appointment and uh, finally the day came, but she I just really like, wanted to know her, you know? Yeah. Like, what is she about or whatever, because I like her so much straight away. So she did my eyebrows, I came home, and I took a toothbrush and I removed it because I don't want to have anything on my face. <laughs> can you imagine? <laughs> Wait, you they were so nice too. Yeah, 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 I removed you, it straight away. How do you, you can remove something like that? Uh, yes, I was scrubbing really hard because it was fresh, you know, so I was like doing it two days in a row. It almost, I have escapes there, but I remove it, so I don't have anything from her, you know. Oh my Can God, you imagine? Bro. But, but Yo, Shorty was determined. Yes. You raise the whatever, bar. Yes. Whatever it takes, you know. If you want her, go get her. Exactly. Get a tattoo even. <laughs> whatever it took. Oh my God. And I was texting her like, oh, how's everything healing? I need to schedule you for your touch up. And she was like, I'm traveling. <laughs> oh no! Nah. Because, because okay. you know, like usually when you do the eyebrows, you have to go for a second session. Yeah. So I was trying to avoid it because obviously I don't have anything there. I remove everything. She's like, "How is healing?" I'm like, "Perfect." <laughs> She's like, "Can you come for the second session?" You know, for a second pass. And I'm like, "Oh, I'm traveling. I cannot." And uh, <laughs> from there we start to like <laughs> chat and. No, so listen. Uh, that, hey, that was her end. You said, "All right, cool. <laughs> we this how we gonna." T- I I feel it. I took my chances. When did you admit that it was? Yeah. When did you tell? Yeah. Years when- later, by the <gasps> way. I didn't know. I thought I was the one that was chasing her because, listen, I let her to chase after me this, the right? After this, I was you know a different... What? Amen to that. Uh, you know what? If you, if you want some tips, we can chat after. <laughs> <laughs> I was at a different point smooth. in my life. I didn't know about gays, you know? Like, I grew up in Mexico and gays are more, more of a sin than anything, you know? Yeah. And so I was tattooing her and I, I really, like, was like, this, this is such a pretty girl, you mm-hmm. know? So a couple of days go by and I'm like still thinking about her and checking her out. And I'm like, oh my God, she's so beautiful. So I had a colleague and I said, hey, and she's gay. And I said, hey, can I talk to you? And, and she was like, why? And I was like, if this is how closed off I still was in this, what, six years ago. Mm-hmm. I'm like, if I open the skin of a gay person, can I breathe in the gays? Hey, yo, <laughs> that's crazy. Hold You're like, why? Were you wondering why all of a sudden you yeah, were Yeah, because her? I was like, I think my mom was right because in mech and when i was growing up with our religion they said if you look at the gays the evil spirits will come in your eyes and you will turn gay this is how i was brought up so is that what happened to you you recently (laughs) you've recently become gay (laughs) ivana's you're like i look that way and uh, you see ivana's the only woman i've ever been with something (laughs) it came somewhere (laughs) (laughs) yeah She's the so, first and only woman I've ever been with. Okay. So I didn't know about this, you know? And she said, oh, is it about that girl? And I said, yeah. And she was like, Ronica, if you like her, just go for it. So right. I was like, you know what? Okay. So I texted her and I was like, you know what? I don't know what happened since I last saw you, but I must investigate. It was two days after you made my after you did my eyebrows. She's like, I don't know what happened to me, but I cannot stop thinking of you. And I was like, yes. And then I just, <laughs> and then I just let her to chase me. The, you were still with the toothbrush? toothbrush. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, yes, I win. <laughs> she was like, with that. Oh electrical <laughs> I'm fucking dead. I, 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 I look ridiculous. I had like all red eyebrows because I scratched it so hard because obviously I wanted to remove the ink. So for one week I was walking around like lunatic, you know? Oh my God. Both of Okay. Lunatic. I feel it. Like, that's cool. That's inspiring. <laughs> right. It's, or it's a little, or it's it a little happen. psycho. I'm inspired. I'm ready to, Depending how to brush my eyebrows it's off for little, somebody. I'm yeah, I need some tips. I need some tips. It's so, so chat after. Yeah. The, what do you mean chat after? <laughs> chat right now. Yeah, Give me exactly. tips right now. You need it's the okay. questions. Um, yeah. Okay. What do y'all want? What do y'all, y'all who have been watching me for years, you know, if there's anything you want to ask her for me, like for advice, maybe they can, either of them can give me some advice. Like I said, I'm in a good place. Even my friend, she's been one of my friends for almost 20 years at this point. And like, she's coming in, visiting from Vegas. And you know, like now she, she's not like, now you're in a happy relationship with a woman. We both didn't know each other was into women. And it's like, now I'm super single. She always met me in, like, I've always been in a relationship. Super single. And I'm super Be careful when you say super single, because exactly when I started saying super single, that's when she happened. Hey, I'm super <laughs> single. <laughs> you hear me? I'm super single. This is the singlest New song, ever. super single. No, super right. single. I'm going to have a super single called super single. Yeah, super single. No, but it is, it is true, because I, like, the same way with, not to make it about me, but I, I understand that feeling of, like, when you finally say that, because... Like we said, when you met me, I was dating or I'm, you know, whatever. I'm like in codependency and like all these different things with people and like just maybe rebound situation, maybe codependent, maybe whatever friendship still kind of open to whatever my breakup had done to me. Um, But now I am in a place where I feel like I feel better 
I feel lighter. I feel like, okay, like I've been focusing more on like what matters in my life and just every day, you know, I'm reading a lot of books and like, you know, trying to just do all the right things to make sure that I'm focused on my future and making sure my son has a good life, my brother, my family, as opposed to dwelling on, you know, I put yeah. it in a file cabinet. Yeah, yeah. You know? Put it's it like, in that file cabinet. It's back there. For and me, when I heard that, I was like, hell away. yeah. I took all that shit that I had been carrying and put that shit in the file cabinet. And from there, my life just went like this. And she was really influential, too, when it came. Because she's a, I say she's the best man I've ever been with. Period. Yeah. Period. <clears throat> Period. <laughs> I still look at her sometimes. I'm like, oh, my God, I'm with a girl. She's like, I cannot believe <laughs> I cannot with believe this. I feel that because that, that is true. Years. It's not so for anybody weird. to think that is weird. But I think it happens to us because I, that's happened to me, too, where it's like I'll be like like when I've been in a relationship with a woman and been like, I'm really like I'm really with a woman right now. Like, mm -hmm. like this is really, really my life. But that also happens to me with English because I was raised by both my parents only spoke Spanish. Yeah. So I never thought that I would be an adult that speaks English to my child so yeah. the fact that he doesn't speak spanish now i'm like i can't believe this is who i am sometimes i say big yeah. words and i'll be like that's me like i said that like that's crazy yeah. like i feel like an adult you know yeah we can't i believe totally it. understand totally yeah because for many years like i didn't uh speak english when i came to america and for many years you're told don't speak spanish in school like i i was forced to speak to learn English and so then I became the English speaking Mexican and then you lose the identity about the from that you're from Mexico so you're tr for me personally I was like trying to navigate what am I am I a Mexican am I am I American am I straight am I a drug addict am I a, a you know I yeah. struggled with all of this all my life and then now being with a woman I say I always say I don't have any kind of gender i don't identify with anything i'm just living my best life yeah whatever comes i i do it yeah understood and what does that make you like how do you how do you feel like what do you what do you what's your story like i also want to know i she's, feel like how does this happen well she's my dream girl so for me it's very straightforward Aww. because i know Aww. that i always like women mm -hmm. so for me it was very easy you know and honestly like veronica is my dream girl and i always tell her that mm. even now <laughs> she is she's Love. a badass yeah. completely you know she, she she's a beautiful a woman so i know you know the the most common question people ask me is because obviously she never liked women before she was always only with the men in her life so everybody's giving me this you know feed into my brain like oh so you are not scared that she will go back to the men or maybe she's missing men and all of these things no i don't because mm -hmm. i'm so present and i really enjoy every second with her that if anything happened in the future which i cannot predict I'm still so grateful for that uh, time I have with her. Oh you my know? God, that's so nice. So, how can she <laughs> not be in love, bro? Like, you that's see? real. You see? Yeah, I love, her, I love her so much. I don't think about these things. Bro, can you pass us the mezcal? Exactly. Wait, cheers to that. Exactly. Just a little tiny sip. And she's least. a man. She manifests. Right there. She Sorry. manifests everything every day. No, the, yeah, right there. Thank you. And she wrote down a list of what she wanted her girl to look like. And yeah, this is, this like. is, by the way, this is very good Thank tip. You. So, okay, I'll get, where's my notebook? Because I have a brand new notebook. My, my attorney gave it to me and it says STP on it. And she gave it to me, um, what was it for? For my birthday? No, for Christmas. And I've been nervous to write in it because it's so perfect. Like, I've never had somebody <laughs> give me a notebook with like my initials on it and it's so like fancy that I'm like, I don't know what my first writing is going to be in it and I don't want to ruin it. So then I've just held it for like three you months. Can't ruin you cannot it. because I will, t I, I will tell, you, tell you exactly like how I get Cheers. to Veronica. Cheers. Cheers. Yes, I'm going to write in Cheers this. Cheers to love. Yes. Oh. Cheers, my love. <sighs> Not me kissing my mezcal. Hey, Woo. that's yes. my mezcal right now. Mm-hmm. Me too. Mm -hmm. I don't know why you guys chase it. It's so smooth. Would you like it some? Is. It is very nice, though. Yeah. It is, but it's my esophagus. I mean, after all these year, <laughs> years of abuse, um, mm -hmm. my uh, <laughs> no, straight up, bro, tequila, touring, heartburn. I, you know, chile, tajin. Like yeah. at this mm -hmm. point, it's just it's the feeling I get in my chest. Mm. <laughs> it just hurts. It's a tingle. Yeah. So you know how I manifested Veronica. I do this for for the past at least fifteen years or twenty. Okay, I tell me, give I me the I tip. Wake up in, bro. Okay, I will give you. I will make it very short. I wake no, up in the morning for two minutes. I'm quiet and I'm trying to think. First, I'm grateful for my life, for the new day, for all the opportunities what I'm gonna get. I look at Veronica. I'm grateful. I have a beautiful relationship. Then I kiss my hands, 
another one, and I'm saying I'm the luckiest person in the world. This is how I start my day. <laughs> and then Where's I my love that. Yes, oh, because, we can write it down. because it's so ridiculous. <laughs> it makes me actually laugh. So it's I wake so up. So I wake up morning in the morning with a good mood because I exaggerate completely, you know. But it works. This is the most beautiful thing about it because I feel like I'm on different frequency. And then for half an hour, I sit. I have, I have my coffee and I write. You know. So it's like literally like. See, this is her manifestation oh, book. Yeah. Yeah, you can check it out. I have I to send you that. some. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yes, I love so that. So I, I write every time. So this is just the manifestation part about what I want to have, uh, you know, what I want to attract into my life, whether it's physical things or not physical things. But when it comes to Veronica, I always, of course, I was always dreaming about true love. That was like, if I can imagine anything from this life, like why I'm here, I wanted to have a true love, true partner and share life together. Aww. Libra. And, <laughs> Libra. Oh, oh Libra. Is, is it what it is? Yeah. I'm very romantic, by the way. Okay. But it's like, like, what is the most beautiful, you know? Like, of course, this is like very important to me. So one day I was going already through the relationships. I call it all stepping stones. Very important, by the way, you know? Yeah. Because every relationship I had took me a little bit closer to, to the one I was truly uh, dream, dreaming of. So I, w I went to vacation to Mexico and I wrote on four pages. I wrote down everything how I want to have exactly my partner. So I start from, let's say, physical health, financial, uh, hobbies, family. Et family, but it was all categories. It's very important to me. I wanted to have a healthy partner. So just to give you an example, so you know what to write. Okay. I wrote, she has to be healthy because I like to travel. I like to do things together. Very important to me. Then I wrote like, okay, she has to have hobbies. She has to have financial independence. She has to have some patience. And then I was already like talking about more like a physical stuff. I like big teeth, so I say she has to be small because I like to grab her and, you know, like, hey, like all of this stuff. Hey, so I it, it, has to be, it has to be. I don't want anybody taller than me, okay? I like small girls, big teeth, nice ass, long hair, brown, brown eyes. So it was literally, I described everything exactly what I love about women. And even from spiritual point of view, I wrote about my woman, you know? So I was like, she has to be uh, very spiritual. Um, I would prefer if she's more than me or if she has a really connection to higher power more than me or the same level it was many things you know she's a great dancer she's sexy she has good style because i love girls when they have a great style i have four pages of that two weeks after i wrote this down i met veronica so manifestation works but you have to be very clear in what you want and i i was thinking about it because everybody asked me like how did you do that and it was combination of few things together firstly clarity Second, I wasn't desperate because I was thinking if I'm going to meet my dream girl, perfect. It will be like a cherry on the top in my life. But if not, I'm happy anyway, because I was I was on the top of my career. I was traveling the world. I'm doing the art I love. I have great friends. I have great family. So you understand, I didn't come from the place of desperation. I came of the place of happiness and gratitude already. So that's why it happened, you know? That's awesome. Can you imagine? Like, how can I get how more lucky? How could you not? Yeah. <laughs> you see? Yeah, like, of course. Come on. That's why I say she's the best man I've ever been with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, but this, this, is the, this is the secret of how you actually attract things or people or opportunities into your life. I think out of f those five pages, there was only two that I didn't fit, which she wanted coming from a, a great family and something else. Yes. No drugs or something like that. No, no, no. I, it was something with the family, but uh, because I was thinking if I, I wrote the literature, like she comes from the great family, because I was thinking in my head, family is very important to me. Yeah. So I was thinking maybe she will have the same, she will hold the same value like me, because if you come, I'm assuming when you're coming from the great family, you have this kind of like a values about it. For mm -hmm. me, family is very important. Yeah. But obviously, she cannot choose her family, you know, where she grew yeah. up. So that was the point, actually, which she didn't fit that time. Yeah. But actually, my intention behind it was different. Because yeah. Veronica is the most uh, loving, loyal person I can ever yeah. meet, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you just wanted her to value family. It yes. didn't matter mm -hmm. what the fuck her family was. Yeah. I get that. And yeah, and you know, th we always understand that there will be some sort of compromise. Like, you know, you could write five pages and if one of them page hey yeah it, you know it's up to you what that page yes you know but you know something that you said that really resonated with me that made me feel like i get that is because one thing that i've been called is like indecisive mm -hmm. so clarity like that word you for you to say clarity mm -hmm. just stuck out to me because i'm like That's you're absolutely you right i need clarity and when i have when i have regrets about anything in my life um especially like my career i feel like especially when i was signed up to a major label i feel like i was missing clarity so any everybody was saying so much that I've always been able to just be like, oh my God, so then and I just get like overwhelmed. So then nothing happens. Mm -hmm. But it's like, 
had I been more clear in my life, had I been more like, this is what I want, this is what it is, instead of just so easily swayed, mm -hmm. I think I would definitely be where I need to be. So if there could be one thing that I could have for my goal this year is clarity. I think I need to be more How do you gain clear. clarity? Mm -hmm. how, do you, how, yeah, do how do you gain, gain clarity? clarity? How did you get there? How did you get to... I think clarity also comes from your uh, life lessons, you know? Like also, yes. Cl clear, uh, how can you get more clear when you haven't experienced so many things? Now that I've experienced so many things, I'm clear on the fact that I don't want this and I don't want that. So I'm definitely clear on what I do want. For example, we started... She's, she taught me how to manifest. And she said, okay, Veronica. Because she would call me and she would say, hey... What is your intention for the day? Every day when we were dating and I was like, what the fuck? Like, who talks like this? Like, what is my intention to get up and go to work? And she was like, yeah, but what is your intention? Like for life, you know? For the day. And I was like, is this like a lesbian thing? Is this like, is this how they talk? Like, I, I don't know. I mean, it, just, kind of, it kind of is. I'm not going to lie. Like, like, <laughs> like, what is your intention? So she said, okay, every day wake up and write down what your intentions are. And she, uh, I started writing it, and, and then she would say, okay, so what did you manifest? And I said, you know what? Can it be about money? And she was like, of course, it could be about anything. So I was like, okay. So I put down a number of money on the on my manifestation uh, journal, and how long did it take? Like that week, mm -hmm. I had Sorry. that money deposited in my account, like to the money. And I was like, oh my God, that's so freaking cool. So I started manifesting even more because it was happening, but I wasn't clear. So I wrote down, oh, I'm showered with gifts. And one day I got a message on Facebook and this woman said, oh, I want to, I want to send you a gift out of nowhere. And I said, okay, she got my address and I get this butt ugly brown, shit brown sweater that's like super huge and I said babe like what would what what is this about manifesting she said you have to be very clear so I receive gifts to my liking so now when we manifest it's like to the dot what we want what time we want it to happen where it has to happen what day you really don't care about and, how but it's how do you happen? deal with the doubt that comes in your brain because there's been times when like I'll have I'll have a and, I, and I'm gonna be very clear about this hey Claire, clarity, clarity. we already here <laughs> all right so um, the only thing that I've ever been clear about that I will say that I, when I do it, I do it for real mm -hmm. is on New Year when the clock strikes 12 for the last I don't know how many fucking years. I've been very clear about the money amount that I'm going to go for. And this year, Jamie, before uh, her sister, by the way, um, who is also my, my best friend and works with me, um, she was like, bitch, have you heard about this? Blah, blah, blah. All this stuff. I was like, yeah, I've been doing that for like years. And she was like. And you've been holding out? I'm like, mm -hmm. no, I just thought it was so ridiculous that I've held it to myself. Like, I've just thought it was, like, silly. And I don't, I also think it's a little bit like, I, I like, me writing down a number at midnight is kind of, like, weird. But, but I have been real. doing that for years. And I have met, met them every year. Mm -hmm. This year was the only year I didn't. This year, I just wanted to find happiness. Like, I, that's what I wanted. Oh, my God, I'm about to cry thinking about that. Aww. All right, zoom out. <laughs> We need to change the subject because I really am going to cry because I'm like, financially, okay. That's good energy, I'm fine. Yeah. I, I want what I want, mm -hmm. you know? So anyway, change the subject because I'm about to cry. <laughs> but okay, so with the clarity when you ask, definitely life experiences. So the more you grow and the more you know what you like and what you don't like. But I think it comes from the place of being authentic to yourself. That's yeah. my opinion. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes we play this, you know, like obviously be existing. You want to fit maybe to some society or you want to fit with other people or this or that. So you get diluted. You know, mm -hmm. but if you really connect to yourself and you go with your true essence, you know exactly what you want. Yeah, you know exactly. So and what we've been focusing on too is uh, what we want. Mm -hmm. We write down what we want. We don't give. We don't care about what we don't want. We don't focus on that. Don't go sideways. Like it focus is on your life. Yeah, you are designer of your life. You know. But something you also said is like when you kiss your hands, you you're like you start off so ridiculous that mm -hmm. you kind of laugh, so you're yeah. already in a better mood. So is that what it is? Like, does it feel ridiculous? Because I feel like it sometimes does. what stops me from doing certain shit is that I feel ridiculous, right? Yeah. 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 The it's more delusion. Like, why am I wishing for this? Like, this is never gonna happen. You know, you do. You already. Kinda psych you are already out. psyching yourself out and telling yeah. yourself, "Hey, you know, this ain't gonna happen for me. I, not for me." Maybe for somebody else, but yeah. you know, not for me. I think at least that maybe that's just my problem. Is that, that trauma? I'll definitely be like, I, yeah. I don't know. Could it be trauma? Right. That's yeah, what I'm asking. Yeah. No, because I, I do the same I'm thing. Like, <clears throat> I see doubt into my own brain. Yeah. So it's like, do you just? You're just like so. 
We make we we made a pact mm-hmm. that we want to be as delusional as it gets. Why nice. not? Because universe is very giving place, and this is just you know it's just up to you if you don't believe yourself enough. Yeah. Because if it can happen something for other people, why it cannot happen can for you? Happen. You know, mm-hmm. yeah. you d- you are deserving of everything what you want in this life. You just well, have I to needed go for to be it. here today. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. Right. Absolutely. Am I not in the right place? You and are. That is a I'm journey. Because right for you to drive all the way from Vegas yes. late last night and and today. talk about what we talked about and then hear this mm-hmm. is like wow. Perfect. Yeah. And even me too. Like I, I, I really and that's one thing that I, when you say like why I'm in a better place or whatever, I do feel like I've been very mindful like I've to stay present and like to really be like, yo, like everything that's happening, every single thing has to happen. It's it's perfect. And mm-hmm. I've been using it the word perfect. perfect so much lately yeah. because I'm just like, no, that's perfect. Like everything that ends up happening, mm-hmm. is like that's exactly what needed to happen. Whatever it is, whether good or bad, that is perfect because it, that is what needed to happen. Exactly. And I'm water and I will just go, you know, I'll, I believe in redirection. So if something closes here, then it's, it's time like to water. go this way. And that's just what it is. And I love that. I, I love all of this. Yeah, this absolutely. is perfect. This is our message. You know, we, uh, we talk a lot about manifestation. We just wrote three books. I wrote three children's books and Ivana did all the um, illustrations. illustration yeah. they're beautiful awesome. by the way they're beautiful by the way Michaela didn't I tell you okay so I need to go to Italy that's what's happening so I have somebody I have a fan that started out just like as a fan just made a fan page and I and I like has started to draw and really like always drew but started to draw me and doing more and more of drawing and drawing and drawing and I've been like yo I've always wanted to be a cartoon and I've always wanted to do like Chi- like Same children's book stuff because i think my voice is is pretty like it leans it's for a cartoon voice you know so i'm just like i've always wanted to do that because at some point first of all you ever seen mrs doubtfire yes mm-hmm. of course okay so i always love that first scene when like he's there and he's just doing the voiceover and like i could probably be wearing no makeup i just show up i do my voiceover it's a cartoon i don't have to look any type of way you also don't have to perceive me i could be right. in the shadows just i just want to be a cartoon bro and so I have Michaela, and I need to go visit her in Italy, and we need to do some of this. But sorry, yes. you just, I have ADHD, so like my yes. brain just goes into It's okay, I'm using it. children's book, bet. Ivana, too. Right. So Creatives, love it. Manifestation for kids, meditation for kids, and visualization for kids. Love it. And it's important because as we come from a generation where this didn't get taught to us, you know, so our instantly doubt takes over. But when you're a kid, you imagine yourself flying and being an astronaut, being a doctor, all at the same time. And it's important to keep that when you're living your life. Be de- delusional. Yeah, because you don't think of limitations when you are little. Yeah. You know, that's yeah. slowly then people will put it on your society. We manifest together for, we have stacks and stacks of Mm -hmm. books where we just sit down and manifest together and so many things we go back and highlight of everything that's happened. Mm-hmm. I love that. Mm-hmm. I lo- right? Like just having your partner mm-hmm. and just being able to together, like, you know, we're like it's us on this journey yeah, on creating Earth. our future. But mm-hmm. you know what I realize right now uh, with the clarity? Because it's really hard. I, I speaking from my own experience, it's really hard when you feel kind of hopeless or desperate to yes. come out of there and do a manifestation or be clear about things, you know? So hard. what I think is very important that you have to surround with people, uh, with place or environment what supports you you know so where is your uh, place where you live where is your home where is your close friends your family you have to be really supported in every way so this is your job like you always have to find all of these things what supports you and that will definitely no, help your you. clarity mm-hmm. definitely yeah. You know, and it's, it's really easier. it's easy for us to talk about it, but when you're engulfed mm-hmm. in the Hollywood life, and when you're engulfed in these music and this this high energy life like you have, it's very easy to not be stable. Yeah. It's it's very easy to not be able to be clear. Like you you're not having that as a lifestyle. So to find it, it, it was difficult. We were living in West mm-hmm. Hollywood, and it was difficult. For me, for it was us. difficult personally. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No. Yeah. It is. It is. I think. I think this business, or you know, everything that comes with this, is so. It you constantly have to be around people that maybe don't have the best intentions for you. You constantly have to be. You know. You just kind of have to guard yeah. yourself a lot. Vigilant. For 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 me, um, because obviously, like I'm pretty recognizable. So if you know me, I'm recognizable. If you don't know, if you've never seen me in your life, then you know whatever. You're missing out. You, oh, I finished the sentence. Thank <laughs> you so much. No, but you know, it's so true. so it's 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 uh, it's it's hard sometimes, and we try to like guard ourselves because it's like I don't know who has the best intentions for me when I go out. Like let's say I go out to West Hollywood and I'm like in the gay area or whatever. Like I don't know who's coming up to me and why. I don't know mm-hmm. if they're coming up to me because they know who I am and I don't know what their intentions are, or I don't know if they're just you know they're they're a fan. I, when it's a fan i love it because i'm like hey yeah i'll take a picture with you hey cool Mm -hmm. but sometimes there's people that they're not a fan they just know who i am 
and they might have different intentions for me or they might text somebody and tell them where I'm at and you know what I mean like it might set you up so it is hard to just like maneuver through life when my whole business is this yeah. and you see it you know so I don't know it's it's, there was it's a, difficult there was a sense of desperation when we were in West Hollywood of how people live they get into that mode of just desperation to mm -hmm. make it to to achieve something instead of living a life where it's just like a pleasure to wake up and a pleasure to do a podcast and a pleasure to write a book and a pleasure because you're doing this out of just love for your life yeah. and uh, we found that that in, in these er these uh, West Hollywood, I'll say it because it was my experience there. It was more of a desperation to keep up with the demand and with everybody else's social media and everybody else what they're doing. It was it was pretty hard. So what we did, we always put the bubble of God around us. Every time we went out, anywhere we went out, we we were surrounded by good energy mm -hmm. and we always attracted really good people. <laughs> yeah, that's that's awesome. What the fuck? And I also think it's funny that last night you kept on being like, you're a cancer. So you're you're a psychic anyway. And I was yeah. just, I think that that's an, also an interesting thing, because like you said, everybody has it in them. And I feel like a lot of people will hear words like psychic or like all these things and be like, oh, that's kooky or whatever. But it's like at the end of the day, honestly, when you're really in your intuition, when you're really grounded, when yes. you're really yourself exactly. in your journey, you don't it doesn't mean that you have to go out there and do anything for anybody else. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, if you do, then that's your journey and that's your path. But if you are just at least like in your mm -hmm. self yeah. you will be able to kind of get those feelings because i agree there's been times when i've been in certain whether it's you know business or it's like i'm just around people i see the desperate like i see the mm -hmm. I, I could i could sense when somebody's genuinely like mm -hmm. yo i'm really trying to like vibe with you like this this is fun this is nice like whatever even if we're making content together i could tell when it's genuine and i could tell when it's like you can also not be trying to make content with me but it also still feels fake mm -hmm. you know what i mean mm -hmm. like i'd rather you have a camera up in my face and me feel like this this is genuine than for you to not have a camera in my face but like i could tell mm -hmm. there's something that i'm gonna owe you somehow later yeah. down the line and now i'm like ooh, like this feels weird but so that's your intuition as well you exactly. know that's telling you something Being, there. it's it's here it's mm -hmm. in this general area i always feel it and i tried to tell my son that because i was on this podcast you said you mm -hmm. saw it yeah. when i told him like you need to not feel so comfortable lying because i was like don't you feel it in your stomach he's like i do and i'm like but you still do it so like how do we fix this because he's 13 years old he's a boy you know he's obviously growing in a different environment where his mom is you know who i am and i'm his dad is you know we he has a yeah. he has a lot going on and i'm just like you can't feel comfortable lying like yeah. you know at least not for the important stuff like you right. know little you know whatever you said uh, on your resume i mean sometimes you know we do gotta lie on our resume because yeah. let's keep it a buck who who drew this whole plan like jobs and corporations and politics and borders and mm. everything, everything that's yeah. made the construct made the social construct that has been made by man you know sometimes hey if you got to get around it a little bit because we know we, where we deserve to be but the real shit you talking to your mom you better not be lying to me yeah I'm your mother. I think I got over that line. I think I was never a liar except for when it came to getting a job because I had to provide for myself. Nobody ever paid my rent. Nobody got me through. Right. But when it comes to lying, like when we meet somebody, I always, always, always tell them, hey, listen, we're new friends. I just want to say that if you have something to say that you don't want me to repeat, don't fucking bring it here mm -hmm. because I, I will tell, like, I can't lie. Yeah. <laughs> I'm dead. <laughs> yeah, she can. And people are laughing, you know, like, oh, yeah. And she's I, like, no, I will say it. Like, no, really, if, you, if you're if you going to talk about bad things about somebody I know, or it's my friend, because yeah. Veronica is very loyal, you know? Yeah. If you're going to say some shit about my friends, I'm going to repeat you. And they're yes. laughing. Or if you're going to lie, or you're going to yeah. come over here with something They think weird. she's going to be uncomfortable saying that, and she's right there saying so that. So that it yeah. never comes in my energy yeah. field. Like, when we talk together, when we're friends, it'll always be cool. It would always be constructive. It will always be about lifting each other mm -hmm. up, not about gossip and bullshit. So once I make a new friend, I always but say very that. transparent. Yeah. That's Which really, yeah. I mean, if you don't want what you're going to say to be repeated to the person you're saying it about, you really should just keep it to yourself. Yeah. Because right. like stand on your stuff. So my, yeah. my stand on business cool. 2024. Stand, stand, stand on business. business. Sometimes Period. I joke around with Ivana and I say my social circle so small, I have speed dial. Just me, my my own phone number. Right. <laughs> right. 
<laughs> no, it is true. And nowadays, I mean, I think it's just been so socially acceptable for like the internet to become where everybody loves gossip and everybody loves, mm -hmm. you know, cheese man talking shit and all this stuff. And it's just like it's such muck because at the end of the day, it's like, bro, like what what you know, if we were really worried about becoming mm -hmm. better people and going in a better journey and going a better route, we would make it about that uplifting each other and, and not uplift uplifting each other fake because I know so many people that are on the internet trying to be these uplifters mm -hmm. and when I've hung out with them I'm like you are that's a facade yeah. and that's gross you know what I mean like just more about where are we going because we're on this rock and it's spinning and it, we don't know when it's gonna end but at the end of the day we're all stuck on it mm -hmm. like stop feeling like you know when you really travel and or when you're up in those fucking high rise the only reason that I like high rise places is because I get to look down and be like damn I really think my problems are so big and look mm -hmm. at how many lives exactly are here and everybody's life is important to them and my life is important to me and you just gain perspective like from up there you feel me like yeah. to be like what the fuck bro so at the end of the day all you have is whatever the fuck is your journey there is no payback there is no get back there is no you know get your lick back there is none of that because at the end of the day everybody's journey is their own shit and it don't matter you trying to hurt that person or you talking shit about that person or you gossiping about that person it's about your life it don't matter what you try to make people think about that person it's their life they gotta live with that you gotta live with that everybody's journey is so individual and so so its own that yeah like understanding that makes you feel better which makes you try to learn from other people which i'm trying to learn from them right now i'm like how do you manifest teach me so i can mm -hmm. just and like i said all i want to do is just be happy i want i'm i'm a relationship person i want to find love i want to find like my person you know what I mean? That's it. Other than that, I got everything else. Like, I'm not thirsty. I'm not, like, cloud chasing. I'm not nothing. I'm, like, I'm pretty happy. I'm content. I great. I grow, I wake up every day grateful. How could I walk around these trees? and Exactly. All these yeah, I was saying it's so here. pretty outside. And not yeah. be grateful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a reminder every day that I wake up. I'm grateful. I drink my coffee. I thank God. And and then I'm like, and then what? I'm like, what else do I do? I'm going to kiss yeah. my hands. Yeah, we, we do that. <laughs> all the time, right? We're so lucky. But you know what? Even though we're all on an individual mission, which is life, at the end of the day, we're all a human race and we're all together. And I believe that at the end of our life, I think about death every day, mm -hmm. right? Every Same. day. I think about death every day. But at the end of the life, we go back to God. We go back to the source. And we're all one. So whenever I look at somebody that's on a really bad path or just a terrible person, I see myself in them. Yeah. I don't disconnect from them and say, oh, they're a terrible gossiper or whatever. I see myself in them. Just like I see myself in a beautiful person. Because at the end of the day, whatever he's doing or she's doing is going to impact me as a human race. It's all connected. Yeah. It's all connected. Yeah. We're all on this rock. And it's spinning. And depending on how we treat it and how we treat each other and what we do is what's going to end up happening. And it sucks because when we're, you know, in the United States and like everything that's going on here, it's like it's unfortunate that a lot of people want to take advantage of whatever the hell is going on. And like all we really got is each other. But like it's like it's weird. I, I was talking about this yesterday. It's like we have to live this life where we have to hope, you know, like teach each other each one teach one like improve the you know our people and like you know i talk a lot about like undocumented people and like what we can do to help and you know just our people in general like how we can improve politics and just everything that has you know race theory everything that has to do with that but at the same time we also have to have this other half which is your own life mm -hmm. your own shit your own journey i have a son i can't not spend time with my son because i'm over here doing exactly. you know 90 percent of the time is spent on other people because at the end of the day Sometimes they break your heart. Sometimes mm -hmm. it breaks your heart to have the best intentions for your people and then they be the first ones hating on yeah. you. So you have to just Ivana gets live. a lot of hate. So from Slovakia, the it's time, the yeah. most really? oh, the yeah. most hate you will mm -hmm. always get. Well, she always gets from her own kind, mm -hmm. which is Why? sad. What's going on? Well, they're hating on everything because I'm too much for them. Uh, meaning like, for example, if I have a lot of exposure or, you know, I mean the TV or something. So people hate on that. Yeah. They hate, hate on her looks, hate on they the hate fact how she's I look, gay. They she's hate my relationship. So really they hate what I do because, okay, Oh, people like to put me in the category. So imagine I'm a tattoo artist, yes. But in Slovakia, I'm also couch. I'm I'm teaching love of attraction, you know? So because somebody or people have this imagination, I'm just a tattoo artist, so I have to stay in my own lane. Mm. Little do they know that I love so many things in my life. I want to have these experiences and I want to learn something new and art comes in many forms. So for me, whatever, wherever, 
whenever I'm tattooing or I'm doing illustrations uh, for the books or whenever I'm teaching, you know, about love of attractions and all of these things, or it can be anything. So whatever I do, I always put so much passion and love into it, but people hate on it. They want to only me to be like certain level and be tattoo artist all my life. <laughs> you know, mm. so this is what they hate on. It can be anything really, but you yeah. know this, you are, you are, you know, you are a public person, you know how yeah. it goes. Yeah. But there especially it's incredible because in America I don't get so much hate like from my own country. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, that's that's definitely how it is and the reason I was asking was because Slo- Slovakia just sounds so like foreign like to me like it's so foreign it's, it's foreign so as fuck. It's foreign. It's like I'm, and that's you and you here like that's that's she, wild. She comes from a little village of like 400 people, mm-hmm. you know? That's awesome. 200 in the middle people. of she grew up in communism. It's so cool. So my village, there's absolutely nothing. There is two roads. <laughs> it's like a crossroad, okay? We have church, which I don't even know where it's function. There is no store. There is nothing. So you always have to have a car to access everywhere. Everything. But they all grow their own vegetables. And, yeah. You know, it's a very village life. It's really life, wholesome. You know? Okay. Very wholesome. So I, I grew up like that, but my dreams or my head was always like somewhere else. So you were there. Oh, yeah. And thinking about like America. Yes, I was but dreaming was already of America. I was dreaming of being she was like a child there. popular tattoo, not tattoo artist, but artist. I didn't know actually I'm going to be doing tattooing, but I always saw myself as an artist and I'm successful and I'm traveling the world. While growing up in communism in small, tiny little village of 200 people when there's absolutely nothing. I couldn't even speak English before, obviously, you know. That's crazy. But for me, my my mind and my big dreams, it took me everywhere. Yeah. All over the That's world. Awesome. All over the world. Yeah. That's super inspiring. Mm-hmm. And it is true that when it's in you, it's in you, bro. Mm-hmm. I remember I used to like wake up like at like three in the morning, four in the morning and just be like anxiety. Like I just knew like the only feeling that I could say was like I needed to get out. Like mm-hmm. that was all I could say. So I would mm-hmm. tell my mom, I would be like, you know, I'm, I, I'm, I'm doing that again. And my mom knew like my mom was just like, I don't know what this is. Like my mom's very like, you know, Mexican. She lives in Mexico. She's very like stick to being Catholic. Don't think about no energies, no nothing. Like todo es el diablo, you know, like mm-hmm. to my mom. Todo es el diablo. Todo That's el diablo. how I grew up. So, so, so I would just be like, <laughs> I don't know, but I just, I, something's in me. I need to like you know so my mom just was like you're depressed or what i don't know what's Mm -hmm. wrong with you but you have problems you know so i'm like in therapy and i'm trying to figure it out or whatever and i remember um i would really deal with this a lot but i always thought about death i always thought about from the casket this way so i always was like what am i leaving behind what am i what is my you know like am i gonna matter what what like i don't want to go to like and i've said this before and i don't ever want anybody to think that i'm looking down on any nine to five or anything but i was just like how am i gonna something inside of me is telling me Mm -hmm. that i'm not gonna just go to work go home have you know like have the regular life like i'm like something is telling me to get the fuck out Mm -hmm. so that's the only feeling it was just like get out get out get out get out get out that's all i thought and um and it's crazy because it's like eventually like even when you try to get when I ended up being married, had a house, had a baby, I have the home. I'm I'm happy. I won the game. The game mm-hmm. was, you know what I mean? I got yeah. the princess, you know, married husband. He loved me. I loved him. We had a house. We had a baby. Still, it was get out, get out, get out, get out. It just was has always mm-hmm. been. So it's like when it's in you and your mind is like, keep going. It doesn't matter if you were born somewhere with three people. It doesn't mm-hmm. matter if you were born in a jungle. You are getting out and you're doing it and something needs to be you're here to be a vessel you're here to speak you're here to mm-hmm. you know inspire you're here to do this so it's beautiful to see journeys yeah. end up you know i love yours now i know a little yeah. bit more yeah uh, I love yeah it. I love we're it. here man and it's the gift that god puts in each mm-hmm. and every one of us you know and there's some people that are just more in tune with it um your words are are the gift your voice is the gift so being in a marriage with a beautiful house and a kid and a husband yes that's beautiful but what about your voice were you able gonna were you gonna be able to use it there or was it gonna be stifled was it gonna be quiet was it gonna be just focused on family you had a bigger calling it was that voice that needed to be heard all over the country all over the world yeah absolutely so i was wanting to wake up wanting to go and it's your journey regardless because like i said with like like even in my marriage a lot of times when and I don't know if you've gone through this, but like when you come out or like you're now queer or like, you know, in a same sex relationship or whatever, people are always like, oh, a man hurt her. So now she's gay. And it's like, no, to be honest, I have nothing bad to say about my ex-husband. She knew him. She knows that, you know, we had a good relationship or whatever. It was my journey to keep on going. He wanted a 
modest life, nice life, you know, like just living. He wanted a wife to be at home and do whatever. I knew I needed to get out there. So I started touring. I started going, you know, just everything that I needed to do. And it was just making us just more and more separated because we just yeah. wanted completely different, different things lives. in life. Everybody's allowed to have that. Was there any cheating going on? No. Did anything drastic happen? that would make it happen no it just was we were slowly realizing we wanted completely different things in our adult years and the best thing that came out of it was my son i feel like forever i will be indebted to my ex-husband for he was very supportive he was my support system and he taught me um like what is it like just he taught me how it was. I was at peace, right like i don't feel like there was any drama nothing was going on so it's like he taught me what it was to like feel safe so I, I'm very grateful That's for that. That's what gave you some nice that tools. That's what gave you some nice tools. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. So he taught me it was safe, it was nice, but our journey ended. And he's now, you know, engaged and happy and he's in a relationship with somebody who is, like, what he wants. And, like, you know, I'm single and I will find whatever my thing is. But super at the single. end of the day... Super, super single. Super, I'm super, I'm super, super single. single. Super no, single. But <laughs> super, super single. We're speaking that into the super universe, letting, letting the universe know, like, I'm here and I am available. No, but... No, but um, you know, you, know. You, you say something like, "Oh, now that you come out, honestly, I don't think that I, I like, I can't identify with this, with this kind of like a, a coming out or being queer or I don't know what it's called." Because from the moment I can remember, I was always weird. People were always talking shit about me. The the girl that got abandoned, her mom doesn't want her, her parents don't want her. Uh, the the girl that doesn't speak English, the poor one, the Mexican, you know, the drug addict, the dropout, the uh, I. I don't know the loser the the one that's going out with the with the uh, the one that's uh what's it called the uh, gold digger the one that's going out with a quadriplegic the now she's going out with a woman now she's a psychic like i can only imagine what people say and to that i have always given zero fucks i could give a fuck about what people think because it's my life and I have always heard that I'm weird or that I'm this or that. So I don't identify with anything. I don't come out of anything. I'm just always out. Yeah. I just always do me. Yeah. Well, that's, that's fucking dope. And I've said that before. I mean, I don't necessarily have a coming out story. I don't think I ever, like, told my parents. I don't think there was a moment where I was like, now I'm, I feel like I just lived. And then, like, I popped out with a girlfriend and then that was just it. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I never really had that ha conversation. I think the only person, and I've said this before, only person I had that conversation with was my brother. Because, first of all, we're, like, fucking super close. And he was just probably, and I don't know, I don't want to speak for you, but I'm pretty sure, like, you were just kind of like, why the fuck am I the last one to find out? Is that what you kind of felt? I need to, like, write, write a... A paper that I bring out every time you bring it up. Oh. <laughs> so that I know, like... What, what you said last time? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, it was just a big change It was just like, me, what? So, it was like, yeah. I don't think it was... Yeah, I think it was just like... Yeah, like a big, like, change or shift or whatever. And that's fine. I mean, we, we grew up... My brother and I grew up being the only thing that was consistent about mm -hmm. our upbringing. It was me and him, you know? Like, her, him and I, or yeah. whatever. Mm -hmm. It was, you know, like, whether we were with my mom or we were with my dad, we still felt very, like, alone because my dad had to work a lot, my mom had to work a lot, they went through divorce, and then, you know, now she's dealing with her boyfriends or whoever the fuck happens to be entertaining the majority of her life, mm -hmm. and my dad's doing the same thing, so... It's just me and my brother watching Ellen and eating ramen. That's so cool. You know? Soul so connections, know? soul agreements, soul connections, you know? And that's how we've built this. Like, this is as much his as it is mine. Yeah, like, I... Tell. This is... You know what I mean? Like, that's my fucking... That's, that's the person that I know that I... Like, everything is going to be left. If for any reason, you it's know, so I go beautiful. first, like... Is going to him, you know, and he will make sure that my son has everything he needs. So, so I don't like know. Like for me, that's so foreign. Like when she talks about family and family connections, or like mom or brothers and stuff like that. Yeah, I have them, but I don't have these connections to other humans. It's so foreign to me when yeah. when you when I hear people talk about. Do them. you have siblings or? Yeah, I, I do. Have, okay. I have uh, two brothers on my mom's side and two brothers on my dad's side, but I had to run away when I was fifteen, so I don't have that connection to to that brother yeah. bond you know like she has a brother and it's she talks to like the other day she was i heard somebody at the airport and she was talking to her mom and i looked at ivana and i said that's so foreign to me that people talk on the phone 
to their family. Yeah. <laughs> so I get, weird. Yeah, I get that. And so you're very close with your family? Yeah, I am. You have si- a lot of siblings or just a Only one brother. Okay, cool. Mm-hmm. Oh, I call I him the that. I call him the Tiger King of Slovakia. He has this huge property with all these monkeys and kangaroos <gasps> and uh, any animal and you, you uh, parakeets see that? and uh, invite me, brother. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I want to go see the the monkeys and the tigers and the bears. You can come anytime, by the way, to Slovakia. Oh, you would yes. love it. Would they would love time. you. I would love that. Yeah, come over. That'd be crazy. <laughs> That'd be dope. I should get tattooed over there. That'd be insane. No, but yeah, I love that. Um, and yeah, it's true. Those soul agreements, those things that you just really have that trust, and and that's right because there's been times when I feel like I've had my little flip out about. I've never I've never really relied on my mom or my dad. My dad's not in my life at all, like, for 14 years plus. I don't know, at this point, it's probably, like, 18 years. I don't know how many fucking years it's been. But, um, you know, he's there, but I don't have a close relationship with him. My mom, I have a relationship with her, but it's very truculent. There's, very, there's a lot of things. So I do sometimes feel like I have nowhere to turn when I need answers or when I need, like... Like I kind of like I'm like who has answers for me? I'm like you because everyone always turn has inside turn with turn. Yeah, but everybody within. always as at least in my business or in my line of work, like everybody has questions for me, and everybody needs either answers or they need solutions, or I can help people, or I can somehow be the source for a lot of different people. But sometimes when I'm at my like point where I'm just like I need somebody, I need to go out somewhere too. When I had this too, I I actually had this and. Uh, especially now that I'm working with energy and helping people. I had a period last year where I was like, who the fuck is, am I going to go to? Like, I need to be fed. Like, I'm helping all these people. I need to fit, be fed. And I started looking for people or gurus or somebody that would help me. And I couldn't find anybody. And I went with I went within and I prayed. And all the answers we have inside, yeah. all the answers we have inside. And you don't need to look for the answers to at your mom or at your uh an advisor yes i get it for business you might but all the answers that you really seek are always within you and you are more evolved soul than your parents so you're never going to find answers there <laughs> fact. that's a fucking fact i'm my mom's i'm my mom's mom exactly and that's um, why you chose her so that's why i feel you on on um that like could like hearing someone on the phone with their parent and like that being foreign to you because i've seen um especially like in in my culture you know like I obviously I'm always around men because a lot of men are rappers or producers or whatever. So I'm constantly around them. And then I'll like if I ever see their interaction with their mother, the mom is always very like coddling and sweetie mm-hmm. and baby and blah, blah, blah. And like whatever. And like my mom's not like that at all. So mm-hmm. I remember being around people that have moms that are very like loving and just kind of like watching it. And it like, you know what I mean? Like, I won't say that it was jealousy. It was like almost like watching like an experience, like just yeah. being like watching and not understanding, but also being like, that must be so cool. But, you know, I don't but, know. My mom taught us. The one thing I can say is my mom taught us how to be funny about shit. Mm-hmm. Like, that's it. Like humor, humor. We know how to make jokes. We know how to crack a joke. We we have a good timing on, you know, all this stuff. <laughs> and here and there, if I'm really at my lowest, my mom will, you know, give me a hug or I'll tell me, you. She's, you know, <laughs> Like, I love you, you know. But for the most part, yeah, she had that hug where it's just kind of like, yeah. okay, you, sweetie, you, like you know. You know? My mom doesn't even hug me. <laughs> her really? mom, oh, she, no. her mom is a rock. Mm. She grew up in communism, <laughs> and she, uh, it's so. At first, when I was getting to know her, I was like, your mom is such a fucking bitch because <laughs> she was not. Ni- she's not nice. She's not nice. It takes a long time. It's taken me six years. But once she came around, like she will, she's, you, you can see that she's had a very hard life and she didn't have love and they grew up in a different time. So with Ivana, you, she will say, oh, mom, I won no, first place in Paris out of all of the world. I won and she'll say, mm, you could have done better. Damn. No, she will say this if I, if I end up second. He's like, why did you go there? Oh my God. <laughs> Literally, he said, I'm like, congratulations, that's also awesome. second on the, in the world, you know? She's on she's CNN. She's like, why did you go there? She's on CNN being interviewed for her <laughs> that, work and her mom enough. will say, mm, I, I didn't watch it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's classic. What sign is she? Uh, she's um, this uh, twins, what is it? Pisces? No, Gemini. Gemini. Oh. oh, Jesus, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well. yeah. She's hard. She's a hardcore she's completely, you know. But uh, at the same time, I think again, I chose her for a reason. Mm-hmm. So I'm a hardcore too when it comes to, for example, make decisions and go travel the world without money, without English, without anything, you know. Yeah. Because that's what I get used to. Yeah. <laughs> it's like it's hard, you know. Yeah, she's a yeah. hard lady. She's mm-hmm. in her sixties and she still goes out there with her machete to cut the wood and put it in the in the. Yeah. fireplace and stuff she's hardcore but at the end of the day she's always there for ivana yes always. end of the day she's always there for me so yeah 
I know I can rely on her. You know. Yeah, that's how it is with my mom. Like I will say, like you know, I talk about like the the non being very nurturing or like affectionate, but my mom. When she's here, she's out there doing some extra to the point where I get mad. I'm like, yeah. can you stop? I'm like, because you're doing this other shit, which is like unnecessary. Trying to chop a tree down or trying to grab leaves and just, you know, just costales of leaves yeah. and shit. And I'm like, Ma, like, don't do that. Like, I need you to be over here. Like, just, you know, spend time with us. Be cool. Yeah. And, but she always wants to be busy and doing something. And I did. I do feel like I learned a lot of my strength and a lot of my business from my mom. From your mom. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Same it's like, with you. it's the tools that I needed to exactly. become who I needed to become. So yes, am I, you know, do I have that mom wound or like certain little things about it? But it's like, I also do, I am very grateful because thanks to what I went through and who my mom is and who my dad is, you know, I'm here. So like I said, it's perfect. I Everything think, is perfect. I think Ivana's mom is a cool, really cool lady. The only time, the only reason she likes me now is because I connected her to her dead husband. <laughs> I'm That's dead. the only reason why dead. she's that like was cool, the icebreaker. Right? That was the icebreaker. After five after, years. After five years. I'm dead. Well, hey. I mean, whatever works, right? With the mother-in-law. Whatever works. My ex-mother-in-law, my my um my ex-husband's uh mom, she loves me. And when I was I was saying this on TikTok, what was it? Yesterday I was live while I was getting ready and my son was in the room. So I was just talking about what my journey was with with them. At the beginning I was scared too. Like she's a she's a hardcore lady when you first meet her. Like I was like, hey. But um now, you know, she's very sweet and very nice and whatever gets the the mother in law with you, it's all good. Yeah. But um totally. That's lovely though. You guys have a great story and I mean, shit, what what now? Or like what you're just I have no idea. I just <laughs> every day I'm just like, what now? That's so cool. That's a pr- that's no, a I great think place to be too. You, you know what now is literally uh touring. So we started in Slovakia already. We want to make as much healing work as possible for people. I feel this is completely my new thing. It took a while, like two, three years ago for me. So I'm going to keep doing that. I, yeah. re- I really love that because it's a different satisfaction for me, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. No, Tattoo- I- tattooing people, it's okay. I can influence positively one person. So whatever goes through that session, you know, it can be some very uplifting. Uh, people usually start telling me like, oh, it was like a therapy for me, you know? Yeah. But now it's completely different because I can have access to multiple people at the same time or for the same time. So yeah. I love that. It's very fulfilling for me. And this is something which I didn't, if you asked me four years ago, I wouldn't have idea that how my life is going to change or even me as a person, you know, this new gift, I would say. Absolutely. And, and it is true that ink therapy if you know because there's a lot of people that understand when you go and get tattooed and you're going through some i don't know how everybody else does it but i come from 15 years old self-harming like just you know my mom hated tattoos so like she was just like if you get a tattoo i will disown you so i never really got a tattoo until i was like older i was in my i was 22 i think when i got my first tattoo so i really just was like one tattoo and that's it my mom was very mad at me for it i go get my tattoo after that i'll it, that was it. It was like, it was over. It was like, you know, mm-hmm. so every time I was going through something, I was like, I need to go. I remember especially when I was through going through splitting up with my ex-husband, moving to L.A., what everything was going on. I remember going to Sh- uh, Shamrock, which is where Boo Boo was, which mm-hmm. Freddie Negretti's son, art, rest in peace, um, was there. And that's when I went and I got a tattoo and I was like, oh, I want to get this. And that's when it became I was in a very specific time in my life that I will tell you the majority of my tattoos came from that because it was just like so many changes that the only thing way that I can like figure it out was like, I'm going to go get tattooed today. Like, I'm going to go get tattooed, and I'm going to talk, and I'm going to vent, and I'm going to just talk. And um, so that's how, like, I started a sleeve and everything that was going on with me. And um, it is therapy. It is. It is. You talk. You you know, and then so when Boo Boo passed away, I remember I went like a year without getting tattooed because I was like, who am I going to talk to now? Like, I went through so much. Mm -hmm. And um, I didn't know how I was going to do it again. And so I left the arm untouched by Boo Boo because I was like, I want him to, like, you know, I don't know. So eventually I reached out his dad. Um, and I was like, I want you to finish, you know, what's your son, you know, cause his, both his sons have passed away. So I was like, and he's a legend. So I was like, I want you to do it. But then we started on my back and I, I, I had not been back to that place since everything happened. Mm-hmm. So when I go back and it's been like two years, I started crying, dude. Mm-hmm. Oh my God. I want to cry now. <laughs> Just thinking of how much, like, you know, how much I went through. It was so life yeah. changing time for me and I'm getting tatted. And so then he's doing it and bro, I just got lit and I just was sitting there just staring at his old stuff and it's all there. Exactly it's crazy as that it we're going to die. Yeah. It's crazy that we're going to die. Yeah. Me. And that yeah. someone yeah. can mean so much to you. And that we were strangers. We, we never, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. 
We, it was my tattoos and we were friends and we went out a few times and we just shared so much in such a short amount of time but that was it that was my journey with him and you know i miss him like i do i i miss the whole like everything but um yeah tattooing is is therapy Absolutely. all of this is helping a person find themselves and it is you know just it's all inclusive so i would love to get a tattoo and talk to you guys more maybe like you know maybe we can make some content where I, literally as we're tattooing we do more of this because yeah. i can do the life tattoo so you can you can talk about your experience and what you mm -hmm. feel or whatever because i feel people are a little bit more vulnerable yes. while they're getting something painful done don't Absolutely. you feel yeah Absolutely. I feel like when I'm getting tattooed, a lot of times I like focus in on what it is that I'm trying to heal through. And that's why I've said like a lot of my tattoos are when I was my most sad because I'll like that. Like I said, I only brought up the self-harm. By the way, I don't at all ever really talk about it very much, but I will say about it because when I'm getting that tattoo and I feel that, you know, and it's probably not healthy to talk about this, but I kind of at least go through whatever I'm going through in that moment. And I like put it all into that pain and I go, I'm going to let it go after this. Like, that's it. Like, that's what I got in this moment. And after this, it's gone. Like, I felt it. You yeah. know what I mean? So I just sit through the pain. And, and I think it's beautiful that How you about do. I use, I'm sorry, baby. Go, go I think it's beautiful oh. that you do bring it up because uh, the reason why I wrote my first book is to talk about shameful things. I I, yeah. write, I write everything that was the most shameful memories that I can remember because uh, with the shame it, rem it removes the stigmas of what can happen. Like if people hear you talking about it, and now that you're this great person and you're evolving and you're at this place, it can give them hope for those people that are self harming and they can feel like hopeless that nobody understands them they can see that you did it and that you're in an okay place so yeah. talking about shameful things is one of my life missions i can talk about everything shameful everything that was done to me everything that i did to myself because there's somebody out there that needs to hear that hey look at her she's she's actually okay she's with somebody that loves her and adores her and even though she went through all this crap that she writes about life can be okay for me yeah so I, I, I uh, give you props for bringing it up and talking about it. Thank you. Thank you. And yeah, well, yeah, that's, that, is, that is. And you, you had something? Yeah, I had yeah. a question. How about I use numbing cream on you? <laughs> <laughs> How about that? <laughs> no, yeah. Can is the story still going again? to be told? <laughs> no, yeah, no, no, yeah. Everything can still can still happen. And yes, please use numbing cream, actually. <laughs> exactly. No, I'm sorry. Um, no, yeah, I've recently, yeah, got like, I, I never used to use numbing cream. And you, recently, one of my friends that's also a tattoo artist sent me some, and it's called No Numbing Cream. And I was like, okay, like, let me try this because, of course, like, I don't want the tattoo to her. Exactly. And you know what's crazy is now I'm at the place where, like, the places that are left hurt, hurt. a lot. Like, Plus, you're getting older. And as yeah. you get yeah. older, your pain sensitivity is, a I, yeah. I see it all the time with Ivana's clients. Like, mm -hmm. Yeah, I pain. need to hurry up before I get too old and then I can't, <laughs> I can't handle the pain. No, because the spots that I have, what is it? I have here. Yeah, that's I have here, mm -hmm. here, too. Um, what is it? I, I did want to get something on my knee, and I know that's going to fucking be Ooh, painful. I saw that being done before. It hurts? Yes. Yeah, right? The, the, yeah. I don't have any tattoos. You don't? Absolutely oh fucking lutely not. <laughs> Maybe later. Yeah? Maybe when I'm older, I was telling you, like, I want to get my face tattooed and my, like, here and yeah. I don't, my fingernail, my fingers... Something, something cool. Yeah, yeah, finger, yeah, finger tattoos. Like whenever I have to go retouch them, I'm just like that hurts. Mm, like yeah, yeah. But um, okay, I have a question for you. How do you feel about people that are just now being put down and just their whole body gets tattooed? Blacked I think it's out. Cool. You what mean blacked out? No, no, no. Under anesthesia. Yeah. Oh anesthesia. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, I, I did that before. You did? She did oh, yeah. it. Yeah. yeah she was. Oh, you've okay. done it? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Shit, I'm like, I might need that for my fucking. But you said you didn't really like it because of the way the skin was like a chicken skin, like the consistency was wet and yucky, and because Does it of change? the narcotics. No, it was yeah. particular person, baby. No. Oh, okay. No, no, no. Oh, okay. This, this, this is yeah. It was just the person because every skin is different. Mm -hmm. uh, and also, depending if is it half anesthesia or all anesthesia, because half anesthesia and depending what you know, I was tattooing very hard area, so that's why like I couldn't tattoo it properly. But back to your question, I don't mind it. I think it's fine for the person who wants to end up with the whole let's say torso or all back and you don't want to feel that pain and you can have it done in one or two sessions why not yeah. because you know for some people they are busy uh they're traveling a lot for example they have busy job they they don't have a time to go every you know every few weeks uh to go to the tattoo chair and basically spend all day there exactly. yeah you know? which is what, so, what happens so why not i, th I think uh, if somebody likes it i would encourage them 
Yeah, shit. I'm gonna, get, I won't do it, I'm gonna get put under. It's I'm expensive. Gonna, I'm it's gonna expensive. Get put under, I'm gonna get put under. I'm gonna get a whole body tattoo and I'm gonna get a BBL. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna walk out of bad yeah, bitch. Yeah, yeah. No, listen, you do it yourself. You know what I mean? Don't, wouldn't you do it? Yeah. If somebody yeah, give I mean, you anesthesia for eight hours, but it's expensive. How much do, are these people paying? I don't want to discuss the right. Price a lot of that. I mean, it's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot. And it also depends because usually it's like for anything from four to six artists, let's say, working on the person at the same time. Time, yeah. at the same time but it's actually hard to tattoo like that because you know sometimes like you need space to stretch the skin every, every yeah, everybody's on top of each other everybody's on the top of each other so yeah. in that sense when it comes to like technicalities it's very uncomfortable i understand the time thing because there is times when I'm, i have to spend all fucking day at the tattoo shop so it's just like i've yeah. had I've had one time when I got I, I was going through a lot and uh, I had two artists at the same time. I've, there's been two times when I've had two artists at the same time and that's cool because then I can have an arm and I can have a leg. I like that. That's cool. At this point, because I'm tatted enough, I don't even think I have enough space to be like put under to get tatted. But um, but I would not what about mind your face? two artists at the same time. Do you right? want to get any face tattoos? I have a few like on the sides, like you know where it's hidden. But I feel like I already kind of have that like resting bitch face as it is. Mm-hmm. That I, I feel like people, okay, people, people address me as if I'm scarier than I actually am because I'm actually not. So if I get any face tats, I think It'll I'll just seem it, yeah. more aggressive than I am. And I'm like, I'm trying to convince people and remind people that I, You're I'm not. not the person they think. It's kind of like having like curly hair or something, or like or like you know my hair gets kind of poofy whenever like i'm brushing it out so people hairstylists might think my hair is stronger than it is and it's actually very like frail like you need to treat <laughs> yeah. it carefully because it's gonna break sweetheart so that's the same thing with me it's like people come at me in this sense and this energy that i'm like that's not really how i am and now you're actually scaring me and now we have a very different way that we're looking at each other so yeah. i try to stay away from here i do want to get finish my legs i want wanted to get more neck and more face oh okay I will get my neck done. And my name. Ne- But they say once you tattoo each other, like your name, the your... It's like bad. Yeah. It's a bad thing, say. right? Yeah. So they say. Um, they say a lot of the things. The neck. Yeah. The neck definitely... Um, She already has all of this. It's so sexy. Hey. My ex told me not to get my neck. So when I did... That's why she's an ex. <laughs> I don't know if to reach for the mezcal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Or Here, reach for the mezcal. I'm dead. There's one over there. The, Where see? Oh. Okay, she got opinions. It's clear because she's there's been I'm like, okay. How do you how do you feel I'm doing right now? Do do I feel clear right now? Completely clear. clear by the way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I whenever I didn't know you, I saw you in a darker, almost moist environment. Oh shoot. I don't know what that means. Yeah, what does that mean? Darker I understand, but moist. Yeah, like the area that you were in, it was dark and moist. Did you move studios? Yes. Oh yeah. <gasps> the podcast studio? Oh. How moist is that? Right we always now. have plumbing issues. It would it over it would overflow. We always have it's always moist over there. <laughs> it's, we need to fix that before it like it flooded. Yeah. Remember? Do you guys remember the the podcast studio used to always flood? That's crazy. It was yeah. darker. Oh wow. I yeah. try not to watch or know about the people that I'm going to mm. go see because it just makes it more fun. Mm. Okay, okay, I'm intrigued. She never knows, actually. She never knows. She's, she still It, handles all my appointments. Yeah. Ivana handles everything. She doesn't everything. know whether it's men, whether it's female, who is it, whether it's somebody she knows, somebody she doesn't know. So I never tell her. So she can connect only on the energy. So what do you think this crow is saying every every time it does it? Because I keep hearing it and I'm like... There's a crow here? I love crows. Oh, is that it's weird? It's like every... Earlier I timed it. It was like every eight seconds it does it. I was like, do they do it on, on a certain time? It was eight seconds for like... The first like six times that I timed it, but I promise you the fact that you noticed that because I was talking about it on live, how that crow I was like, this crow is ridiculous. It's very specific. And I was talking about a crow yesterday. Mm. And then I was like, it crows now are popping up on my for you page and how smart they are. And they're very fucking smart, dude. Crows are smart as hell. Yes, they are. They're very smart. Do you have somebody in your life that passed away? Uh, like uh, th- this is this this guy is. I feel like he's Mexican. Of course, he would be Mexican from you guys, but almost like he had like a nickname. Um, almost like Cascara or something like that. Like you know, like Mexicans, we give each other like nicknames that make no sense. But he has like a Cascara Cascara nickname. I don't know because I don't. I haven't really had nobody pass away. He has no. I mean, okay. Well, this That's is one your thing f- that can help. He has no. Mem- memories which is fucking strange to me because he does we a lot of things have happened but he's just has a block i think because so much even with my dad like i'll talk about my dad and he just has no well i remember it's a coping things, but, coping mechanism but yeah not like 
I don't know. I feel like a lot of it was just, it's just like right, like regular. It was like every day I would do like the same thing. So I, like you kind of don't have memories that stand out, you know? Like, That's what you say, that you don't have memories that stand out. I do have, but I mean, I don't remember a lot. Sometimes my friends telling me something, something happened to you two years ago. I don't know even what they're talking about. <laughs> I feel that. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm serious. Yeah. I don't know. I'm like, you don't remember? I'm like, absolutely not. My brother, like I'll tell him. Like, my brother used to be very outspoken, very like, he spoke Spanish mostly. And he was very like loud and playing, and I have all the all the v- videos. I have a lot of VHS videos like that we we can see. And then he became very shy, and he's very reserved, and you know. So I'm just like, all right, there got to be something. But hey, we respect the man because he's a. He's it can stoic. also just be comfort and he's your quiet. evolution. You know, maybe the the what what he was expressing before was just out of nervousness or out of just you know trying to be okay. Now he's just comfortable with his life and where he's at. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. you at peace. My memory um, loss is because I I have fast life. I feel. Oh, mm-hmm. Ivana's completely, mm-hmm. completely. If you asked us what's next. I have no clue. We're, yeah. p- we're tomorrow. We're anything. we're packing for the airport and we are leaving back to Europe. But I know that once we start to pack for the airport, she will bring out everything that needs to be ironed. <laughs> Two hours before we have to be at the airport, she would want to iron, or she will vacuum. want to vacuum or or organize her drawers because she has extreme ADHD and she just like always going. So I never know. And when you have ADHD, because I get that too, I feel like as I'm getting ready to leave is when all of a sudden my organization and everything happens. So now all of a sudden now I'm packing, but I'm also organizing everything I could have done the month I was here. Exactly. But now I'm like... I'm doing everything at the same time. I think it's the anxiety to having to pack to leave that I keep myself busy. So then I just start doing everything at the same time. And I, you know what? It's fine. Yeah, it, it is what it is. But I get that. I I'm have a activated. fast life. Yeah. She's always activated. Do you mm-hmm. ever look through your phone, through your pictures, and you're like, oh my god, look at my life. Like, there's times when I, like, I, I won't really think about it. But when I start scrolling through my pictures or videos, yeah, there's I mean, a lot of stuff y'all haven't seen. Awesome. But I'm like, dude, my life is insane. My life is insane. I'm like, it's a fucking music video over and over and over and over and over just scrolling through my fucking pictures. But I think it's amazing. It is. But then, you know, it does shitty things to my memory, but fuck it. Like, I live Mm -hmm. a great life, and I think, you know, that's that's the biggest, that's the most important thing. Yep. One one year of my life is, like, for other people, like, 10, 15, easily, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Always something. That's beautiful. It's always something. She likes to have an adventure. So one day we will be in Paris and then the next day we will be up in Madagascar where nobody goes. There's no tourists but Ivana and I. I will go go from five star. I will go from five star to like some jungle when you you know that's you awesome Wait, we you're have my to hero use, dude like right. I want to be like you we went, when, when, hell I want to go to Madagascar <laughs> with Zabumafu oh my gosh it was crazy that was extreme that was, we, extreme. That was extreme we that we were in a car where there's I mean I don't even want to <laughs> it was crazy we had to use the restroom and the fields and she That's, loved that shit. I love that I cannot say say I necessarily love you it, love that shit babe. but I love that this is life you know so and I, I could live it I mm-hmm. could be in that environment and experience it. It was so poor in some areas where people weren't even asking for money. They were asking for water. Mm-hmm. Damn. It was crazy. It was like a hell for like... Yeah, the money didn't have any value there. No. It was more literally water. That's wow. all they asked the kids and people. Yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. my God. That's wild. I, I, need to, I need to travel, bro. I think that's oh, what that's my the journey best. is. Like I, that's you know, the best. We travel everywhere. Mm-hmm. Everywhere. All right. I'm going to need... I'm going to need... I'm, I'm going to manifest, so what, but I'm also going to need a list of like... What places do you think I should go? Slovakia, Everywhere. You just Specific. Say Start Slovakia, with Slovakia, Potetra. then go from there to Prague. She'll line you up all the places yeah. you need to play mm-hmm. at. I love that. Right? Yeah, oh yeah. From hey. the music industry, I know everybody in Slovakia. And Prague. I, I love Prague. that. Yeah. Wait, what, what do I, what, what's the language? Slovakian. So I need, okay, bet. But people right, speak bet. English. You know. Okay, bet, bet, bet. Yeah. They don't but, speak but still, English. I from the industry. Because the other day, the other day what happened was I was in Miami and I remember here talk about manifesting and, and like I said I've, I've always been like tiptoeing around the idea of like I maybe I'm you know because I have had very good intuition about certain things but I remember being in Miami and being like I'm not leaving here back to Cali I told my manager I was like just just so we know I'm not leaving here back to California I'm leaving here somewhere else I'm like I feel like it always happens to me when I'm like feeling like this so something's about to happen and so I literally was at an award show and I look over at her And I was like, wouldn't it be crazy if X, Y, and Z happened? And I promise you, we were getting back into the Airbnb. We, I just walked through the door and I get a text message and it was on WhatsApp and there was only one letter. So I was like, who is this? And in my mind, I remember I went, I went, Jamie was there and I said, if this is who I think it is, this is fucking insane. And sure enough, it was. was. 
any and the person says i love these stories um, yeah the person says uh that they need me to go to france and so i'm gonna need to go obviously from miami like and this is just like this so it's just like i'm gonna need to stay in miami i'm going my manager came back to california i went to france i recorded the things that i needed to record it was insane it was life changing awesome it was life changing like just being there was just yes. what the fuck is this and then i flew back and you know but i will say that everybody thinks that everybody speaks english everywhere no but when you're really in there you're like hold on this is a little less english than i thought exactly because the driver's just talking to me and i'm like um and i'm throwing spanish in there english, exactly i'm trying to do this i'm like i don't know what the fuck you know yeah. what i mean i'm just going around like what the fuck is you this? know the movie bridesmaids where the girl's like and the morning yes <laughs> she started so, to repeat five. that i pulled this off in slovakia because ivana has a lot of tv interviews and i'll be there with her and they'll say ah, la, 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 and i'll be like ah semiaki ah i'll throw in <laughs> whatever word saying like potatoes and, and <laughs> Uh, have a good night yeah but Sleep she will well. make it like really like text you know i will yeah. i will pretend i'm talking but i'll just say every word i know in slovakia and like mm-hmm. stanica, idiem, som sima, like whatever <laughs> whatever comes out it's it's so much she, fun she said the bus station and i'm cold that's um, what i do with spanish <laughs> yeah, right spanish. but it works i saw you over by the way i got so excited there what uh mtv music award oh yeah because <laughs> this was literally like, yeah i it's remember iconic. this when i used to watch mtv you know like a long long time ago it's yeah. iconic yeah and i saw him like, oh like yeah like yeah that's awesome that's how i feel like I, to me i'm like sometimes i have to remind myself like yo i really have one of these little things so i'm happy i'm, I'm happy you have it there so you can see it you know yeah I'm happy. sometimes so you cool. have to remind yourself bro because because mm-hmm. i you know i i don't know i just live i in my mind sometimes i'm still that insecure you know 14 year old kid so like sometimes i have to be like yo you're this now like you need to really like live this because mm-hmm. i walk into rooms like i'm still that person and and sometimes you know maybe i loop i've missed a lot of opportunities mm-hmm. and that's what was happening my manager she's very into energy and stuff like that so she was like you need to stop being so shy she's like there's so many people that know you or know of you and you walk in these rooms and like you miss all these people that are like looking at dude i had some of the biggest artists at these premios right walk up to me and like fist bump me or be or give me a hug or like different things and she's like talk to them and i'm like and i was just like i just freeze and i just walk away and then so i promised her like i was like i'm gonna be better i'm gonna be better so the next two events that i went to with her like i kind of came out my shell and i was like okay and she's like i'm proud of you she's like you're you're starting to be normal and i'm like i know yes, but it's so hard so cool. to just be normal because i'm like ivana was like that she was that. deathly shy deadly yeah yeah Deadly shy. it's very hard to put yourself in uncomfortable situations but the most beautiful part about it is like the more you put yourself in uncomfortable situations the more you're gonna get actually, when i met you know, her the first yeah. time this is exactly what you need the first time yeah. she ever went to chris brown's house to tattoo him she said babe can you come with me because you know he's gonna talk to me <laughs> and i, I was that. like that's a mood <laughs> and and he's and he's completely like my favorite yes. artist you know and he's so yeah. nice to her you know that yeah. now they're different she goes there all the time but she he was talking to her and everything and then he's looking talking to her and then she he's like this and then she looks at him and she looks at me and she looks at him and she looks at me <laughs> so that i can <laughs> kind of veronica repeat so that i can translate what he's saying you know yeah. it was so cute yeah but yeah. she was super but i'm shy. deadly shy like one of my favorite artists is like i can i can drop the name right yeah, what, yeah. Do whatever you want. anyway justin bieber i would love to tattoo him mm-hmm. justin if you watch this okay <laughs> i mean look I justin, would love to I doubt, if you watch this you're on you went down a rabbit hole down <laughs> fucking youtube <laughs> But hey, maybe you you probably know. Maybe Justin, you, know you watch me. this. So if you watch this, my dream is to tattoo you. I'm gonna so. t- I'm gonna keep it a bug with you, Ivana. Uh, probably Chris Brown is probably like a better route than I am. But hey, <laughs> I love the confidence. Though. We have a confidence in you. Come on. Thank you. Okay. Back. Yes. So, so I met he, I met him twice. The first time I couldn't even talk. She couldn't even. And go then up I was like, him. if this happen again, because come on, I g- how many chances I can have? You know. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, but the chance came again, the second chance. So I was all confident. I'm going to him. I'm going to tell him. I want to tattoo him. Blah blah blah. You know. So. It was so uncomfortable for me, but I did that, you mm-hmm. know? So I was like, okay, but I never forget that feeling. Like I was almost like, and I'm not feeling intimidated or something, but yeah. for me, it's so uncomfortable, yeah. you know? Yeah. She's so shy. Yeah, I was so shy. So I was like, <laughs> for me, I have respect for what they've done and for their art and for who they are. But at the end of the day, like I said earlier, yes, I feel course. like we're all human and we're all suffering from the same things. So she goes up to him and, and she's so ready to talk to him. And she just goes back into being that shy little girl. And mm. for me, I'm like, 
Yeah. But for me, it's even weird to go to somebody, you know, in the first place. Absolutely. I mean, like, uh, for me, it's weird to just go to somebody or, oh, can I take a photo or I want to tattoo you or something. It's weird to start with, you know? Yeah. But I feel yeah. you. But, which yeah. is probably why you end up with somebody like this yes. because it's like you're oh, so she's like absolutely this. not shy. The people that I've, that I've, you know, like dated or been with, you know, obviously after. No, I feel like always. Um, they're always so like outspoken. confident for me and outspoken and they're like they maybe even for themselves they won't be but like for me they'll be like no go like do it and they're always so like don't give a fuck which i guess maybe that's why i end up with the people that i end up yeah, with true. shout out bpd bro like when you know the good side about it is like they just you know they go for it but the, the bad side is I yeah. also had the feeling like what you said before that you are missing on opportunities mm -hmm. because yeah. that's what I thought because I was in any room and with so many a listers and I'm yeah. quiet you know so Same. but this is something oh, like she's I'm in trying the to corner. be better every she's time she's at this huge yeah. event I be in the corner. and she would be in the corner hiding and I'm like what are you doing she's like oh uh, just look Veronica <laughs> la last time I remember you <laughs> Veronica grabbed me literally <laughs> grabbed me and she threw me like yeah. onto yes. somebody you remember right yes I don't that's say perfect that. that's exactly what you yeah Cause same with me, like and you know and like with Jamie too. Like Jamie be like, "Go, friend," and I'm like, <gasps> like inside, I just feel this like crazy, you know. But you know, tequila helps a little bit. So mm -hmm. then once I get there, then I start a little bit, whatever. And um, yeah, but it's just being painfully shy. I don't know. But like, I think since you changed this to your, how long have mind. you had your blue hair? Oh, <laughs> I put it on this morning. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. like you've had a blue hair for how long? <laughs> What do you mean? You had it before. This yeah. is not yeah, the like, first time. Yeah, this like, is yeah, your well, I interchange it all the time. But yeah, like I, I, I do feel like my look changes a lot. Well, since you had blue hair, I feel like it's starting to open up your throat chakra. It's starting to open up your voice. It's starting to change you a little bit. Oh, I'm about to have blue hair for the rest of the month. <laughs> I will say that somebody that I didn't think that was in that into me or whatever and that I was like very scared of they were like I like your blue hair on you I was like out of nowhere I was like oh shit I just got a text message talking about my hair I didn't this person doesn't even like my pictures that they, they, they're just quietly in the background and then randomly say Sucking. some shit and I'm like you Sucking look at in my the shit background. and they got a whole screenshot I'm like you look like, at my shit and you screenshot my shit but you don't like it well I like it no I, just, I mean but they don't like it but they look at it yeah, I have a I lot think of people that's that so do weird. that to me. Like, just I have a like lot of people it. that do that to me. Like, there's a lot of like lookers. <laughs> my, I will say if 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 the people that look at my stuff would interact with my stuff exactly, I would be in a completely different place. Thank but there's you. a lot of people that one look at my stuff, two gain um inspiration from my stuff, and I do think that I'm a source to like a lot of people that are Coffee. way more famous than me, and I'm a source, so they'll like see it and they'll be like, okay, I see what she's doing. Let me let me improve on that. Exactly. So then they do it for themselves, and then right. it works for them. Good. But I'm here, like. But you know cool, what? Too? I'm a source. It's not really that personal because look, everybody's like moving so fast that even stopping to tap is time consuming you yeah. feel me so like stopping the screenshot is wild but okay that's that's a, that's a different story <laughs> that's stopping like getting tattooed your eyebrows tattooed yeah you know she told me a year later what she had done i didn't because know I, because i knew that it was creepy i knew it <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was like, I it's so freaking creepy when she told yeah, me no, she, so she made I was it, like super she made it, I was like, well, she made I, it really romantic know. she was like hey hi would you like to meet me in rome and i was like let me check my calendar yeah <laughs> so we're sitting in rome and it's all romantic it's so nice pretty we had a nice dinner and she goes i have something to tell you and i said what and she goes she lays it all out how she planned it how she got tattooed how she did what she did and she was like isn't that romantic and i was like <laughs> <laughs> more like a psychopathic <laughs> fucking creepy oh. no you said you said it was romantic but i had to because i was in a foreign country oh my gosh no but i thought that was pretty pretty romantic creepy i need to go to rome yeah i love rome. rome to be romantic <gasps> Oh, that's a, that's a new song. Bro, romantic in Rome. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I think I think this year that's that's why I'm travel so, I'm feeling lighter. I'm like travel, family, friends, good time. You know, I, I have always prioritized obviously finding my true love and i feel like at this point it's more like live and enjoy and do you know like the fruits of my labor are here like like just vibe and then you know it'll happen and if it doesn't then you know i live the amazing life anyway so I I think when you find your true love it'll start with self-love first mm -hmm. that self-love that falling in love with yourself yeah that's true by the way as yeah. soon as that really like you're really really into yourself that's when that 
mm-hmm. partner comes. Yeah, that's what happened when I got pregnant. It was like my best shape I've ever been in my life. Bro, I was squatting. I was deadlifting. My ass looked nice. My stomach was tight. Dang. Everything about me was and right. Boom. Boom. Speak you know me. that there's a lot of Osempic babies coming up because girls are feeling so skinny and so good on their body that, that they're really calling Ozempic it Osempic boom. Babies, wow. Osempic baby boom. Yeah. I'm dead. That makes sense. It mm-hmm. does. I mean, back healthy, in that day, 13 yeah, exactly. years ago, like Ozempic was in Wallen, but. You know what? I was in the street. I, I mean, was, so I was, how I get them shots? <laughs> Where, right. Go to Mexico. Up. <laughs> Mexico. Oh, no. I right. Can't. But listen, yeah, I mean, <laughs> it is true that when you are so focused on yourself, when you're doing your best, when you're focused and mm-hmm. it'll pop out of nowhere. You know what I mean? It just happens. Because everybody can't help but love you. When you're so in love with yourself, everybody else is like, oh, my God, who's that? You know, you're bound to attract people mm-hmm. that are in love with the pieces of you that should be. I love this. Yo, I love myself, man. Good. Everybody love yourself. <laughs> I love myself. You know, Justin Bieber said love yourself. So she going to tattoo like Justin Bieber. Mm-hmm. That's you know happening. Because I mean? like, he clearly watches his podcast. He's he into does. Modelo and Tahin. You know what I mean? True story. Hey, nah. Maybe he needs some Mexican friends, though. You know, do you ever think, like, you know, as a Mexican, I'm like, we're, we're good everywhere Mexican, we go. Mexicans you know, are father. always good in an Everybody environment. Tequila, At this you know? point, I believe everything. So however this comes, I'm going to be grateful. Lit. I'm mm-hmm. super I grateful. Being in Slovakia, being one of the only Mexicans in the country, I'm just like... Why me? I'm your Mexican friend. Yeah, <laughs> I love that. So when you do this stuff like here, like you, you know, how does it, does it um drain you? At first it did. Because I didn't really have honor or didn't really know. I was just like, oh, this is a cool new new gift, new skill. It did. But now it gives me like full on energy, especially if I do mediumship and I connect to somebody that's past and it brings a cool vibe into their life. Or if I like I had a, a gal that I connected to her mom who hung herself, committed suicide and mom was able to come in here and talk to her and, and give her love. And she needed that for closure that just makes me high. It gives me so much energy. It's very healing. It's uh, beautiful because in my country, Mm -hmm. I translate every client. Ivana does a lot of translation Mm -hmm. and sometimes it's heavy for her, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I can feel the pain, you know? Like everybody has something. Yeah. Ivana sometimes cries, you know? Sometimes I just burst crying. So together, so like you feel it too? Yeah, because I'm empathetic. So imagine if I... She has to translate because they don't speak English, you know? Okay. And the messages from higher power are so beautiful. The spirit is so gentle. It's gorgeous. So sometimes it's just like you feel all of this love. Sometimes you feel their pain. Sometimes you feel their traumas. So Veronica, I don't know how she does that, but of course she's like... But listen, when it, when it, it started happening the most, I asked, like I told you, I asked God for help. And I went for... I used to go for walks. We lived in this little village. And I would go to the castle and I would go for walks. And one day I heard spirit say, hey, look at that man over there and memorize him. So I'm looking at the man and he I memorized everything. And then when I had a client that day, I heard spirit say, okay, that man, describe him to her. So I said, okay, I have a, an energy of a man here. And I described everything. And she said, yeah, that's my dad. And then I said, okay, I knew that he had an ailment in his stomach because of the beer that was on the bench. I described the, the interaction with the little kid and he, she connected the pieces to her father and from there I would just go on walks and I would see people and I would connect it and it was just the way it started happening it was like a puzzle for me and then from there I would see animals and bring in animal readings and it just brings a lot of answers it's just really weird how but I think then it's I, really weird how it happens for me like I can't explain it it's it's just downloads just when I see the person I will be able to connect to what they need to hear or what they spirit needs to bring in for them I think you should clarify the animal reading for people. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So one time I was, um, the the first time it happened, I went downstairs to our our outside kitchen and there was a spirit, uh, there was a sticker of an eagle and it just caught my attention. Sometimes when it just catches my attention, I stop because it's from a higher power. So I looked at the eagle and I heard, go inside and research what this spirit animal means. You're going to use it for your next client. So I was like, what the fuck? Like, what, this is for real? So I went upstairs, I researched it, and I put together this beautiful message about what a spirit animal means, what this uh, eagle means. And when my client got there, I used the message from spirit animal to help my client grandpa connect. And the spirit of the eagle helped me connect them together. And from there, like this whole book is filled with animal readings. I'll show you like animal readings from like this one's from a red admiral butterfly this is a moth and 
This is a green grasshopper. So whenever I would see these animals, I would take a picture of them, and then they started piling up on my on my camera, and I would just go chronological order from my clients, and I would use their message for their reading, and that would help me bring in their loved ones, or uh, that would help me answer questions about their life. Oh wow, that's wild. It I is mean, wild. Yeah, there's information everywhere, you know, like, and you're tapped in. It's really weird. I'm still like trying to learn it, and it's really weird. It's like almost like it's so mind blowing, but it helps, and it it helps me. It helps them, and at the end of the day, it helps them heal or leave with a healthier state of mind. Yeah. How do you feel about goats? Right. I don't goats. feel about any animal. Oh. They just, they just uh, like, it depends. Well, I just know people are, like, they're kind of related to, like, some, like, evil stuff oh, in yeah, general. Yeah. But, I mean, obviously, they're not evil. They're just goats. Yeah. I don't fuck with evil shit. Like, I don't connect to evil spirits. I don't do any of that. Like, that's, mm. that's not my gig. Oh, yeah. yeah. I know. I just, I think they get, like, a bad, like, they look scary, yeah. you know, at first. But Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, people, people tend to give them a bad rep because they do look scary. And at nighttime, or if you point a camera towards them, they look, <laughs> but, like, they're just goats. They're it's just a chupacabra. Them, yeah, they're just being themselves. But you, you know? know what? I think animals are all unconditional love. I think it's humans that put a bad rap on anything. Yeah, except for my dog, Poncho. He's an asshole. Sorry. No, I love him, but he's just like, why he don't love me back as much as I love him? He only loves me when he wants to, but like everybody else, he loves. He's part cat. Yeah, he's a cat. He's the cat of the dogs. Yeah. I have four dogs. Because the other people, well, Alyssa gives him like food. like. But Lilo just like, oh, he even puts with- his cheek up on Lilo and then they just sit there. And he, as long as Lilo wants to put her cheek up, he will put his cheek on her and he'll fall asleep like that. Maybe because he knows you, he feels you don't like him either. <gasps> I love him. I'm going to bond. I'm going to go on a boy's trip with Pancho. Be like, we're going to bond. That's my son. <laughs> I think I just feel like I wish he loved me as much as I love him. You know what? You're right. Maybe I'm not communicating my love how I should. I'm just expecting love. But I'm not. Give I need me. to communicate my love more. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah, the take away that energy that he doesn't like. Putting yeah, up a exactly. Boundary between you guys. So he loves me. He loves you. And you gotta say, yeah. yeah, exactly. Stop saying he doesn't love you. Because mm-hmm. you can also transfer love telepathically to anything that's alive. You just start imagining the number eight from your heart to their heart, even if it's an animal or a human or a tree or whatever it is. You just wrap your number eight around you guys, and that's just sends so much unconditional love. I love that. I but it's that. literally what what you think also. Yes, I do that mm-hmm. all the time. Oh, mm-hmm. that's awesome. You yeah. have you have to switch how you think about him. <laughs> You're yeah. right. Yeah. You know, I he just... doesn't love you because that's literally you're gonna attract them. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Wow. I'm inspired, bro. Honestly, mm-hmm. I feel like this was a session. This was same. Dope. Yeah. I want to continue more <laughs> sessions. I feel like I feel like this is. I feel like I have homework. <laughs> I need to do, I need to write, I need to think. I manifest, to, yes, absolutely. I need to manifest, I need to have the eight around me and a bunch of different people, like mm-hmm. the eight. You know what I mean? It's lit. I love that. This is good. I Anything else you guys want to say? Because I mean, like, I feel like this is... Well, I was I'm, wondering, like, how, well, how you think yes. about dreams. Like, you think they have meaning or... You know, every night before I go to sleep, I ask God for download in the dream. <gasps> I just because I don't want to waste my time like if I'm gonna shut down my computer just give me some downloads and if you keep a book by the bed as soon as you wake up instead of grabbing your phone write down your dreams because they're downloads from uh, other realms or downloads from God let's not talk about my dream last night <laughs> do you believe that that dreaming water that is dark is bad it depends what it feels like to you but I think that water is always good I was in this was it calm boat? or no? No, like what I could say and what I said, it was like I was in this boat. A lot of things happened. There was there was all these. My, my dream last night was wild. I have dreams every night and every night I remember them. Like, so That's awesome. it's just mm-hmm. like it's constantly happening. Last night was very chaotic. There was it was a party. There was a lot of different people, rappers, influencers, different people, just people, even friends, just a big party. But somehow there was still this feeling of we we were all kind of running away from something. There was something that was kind of chasing people. So at some point, the party dispersed and everybody's running in different directions. Everything's going on, whatever. But we linked back up and then the party continued. So the party's continuing. Something happens. I get too drunk or something, whatever. I wake up and... Things happened, but I don't remember from point A to point B. So something happened. But there was some sort of like regret or like embarrassment within me because something happened with a girl that I don't remember. So I was just like, what happened? Like what? So I'm trying to get an explanation. Like what happened? 
who was there like what the fuck you know and she's just kind of like putting blame on me and i'm just like how did something happen if i'm not aware of what the hell happened whatever at the end of the day that whole thing is continuing moving and then now we're in a boat and we're in this boat it's kind of like yachtish kind of like a boat has windows so we're now going down a river and it's black water and it's going and there's like malls or stores like you can stop and go into a store if you wanted to but we're just going and there's people with us and they're like i'm scared the water's black and i'm like no it's fine i've been here before like they just do that to like scare you but it's fine like it looks fine so and then there's windows so the water will hit the windows but it doesn't hit us so it's just like it's there so we're aware of it but it's we're safe we're fine i knew we were fine so we just keep on going and then at some point we dock the boat and that sounds like a movie i'm watching is it on netflix or on prime is that what's going on it's like, such a, a good movie? movie it's like triangle of worry or triangle oh, yeah, of stress what is it i don't know Woody it's Hadley so so good wait i thought did this scene happen yeah it sounds very familiar to this movie Triangle Shut of Sadness. Triangle of Sadness. It's so freaking good. Where the fuck is... You gotta watch it. I'm in a Triangle of Sadness? <laughs> you gotta watch it. I thought I was happy. <laughs> oh, I'm fucking miserable again. <laughs> fuck. It's so good. It's never gonna happen. Look, yeah. there's a joint right here. Ooh. That's crazy. That's Look at like, your, ooh. Ooh. <laughs> is that what happened in the Triangle of Sadness? That's like when we went to Argentina like last month. Oh, yeah. And I... A, I on the plane I dreamt that we like the plane I mean it didn't crash but it like landed on a mountain and we were like stuck on it and we had to climb down the mountain huh. and then but that was a movie that I mean I hadn't seen it but oh the, the movie there of the plane crash no, that they mm-hmm. they no. ate they ate each other mm-hmm. yeah I was obsessed with that when I was growing up because it was like still very famous it's just coming back on what was it Netflix yeah like there's been like other it's so good that versions, movie but yeah yeah this one was the best yeah. That's weird. I had a dream last night that like there was a bunch of animals and then there was a uh, a different kind of animal that was like shaped like a house but it was like a little like a little house and it would like <laughs> it would like have one leg and it would like move like it would just stick out the one leg. I want to take whatever awesome you guys are taking. <laughs> and then that's like, it. I was like these dreams are freaking to look cool like houses. here. <laughs> Maybe it was the slug that we saw last night that didn't oh, have a shell. Yeah, we you see? see, we saw a slug. I haven't seen a slug in ages. It was a skinny slug. It was a I skinny was, slug. It was like a deprived slug, almost like a worm, but it oh, wasn't Sempic a worm. slug. Oh, Sempic slug. Oh, slug. There you go. Oh, yeah. Slug. That's but so funny that you bring weird. up worm because your animal. Actually, I had an animal reading for you today, and it was from the. It's a worm. Oh, damn, Aww. great! Like from a tequila worm? worm? No, no, no. Like it's a not a worm. worm. It's. Let me see what it is. Because it was the slug from yesterday. Hopefully, it's a caterpillar. No, or no. a tequila worm. It, it's almost like a cat. It's an army worm. Army worm. That was your reading for today. What the? What, what that means? What that mean? Well, see, I was walking one day and I took a picture of an army worm, and that army worm told me today that that was for you. Oh. So I write down what what the messages are, and I can give it to you later. But see, that's it. Army worm. That's your spirit animal, and it just what does talks. He do? I don't know. It just told me to write down some things, and this is for you. This is your message for, from your spirit animal. I can give it to you off air, but... This Do you want to give it to me here? It's up to you. you I'm know? fine. Yeah? Yeah? Hold on. Y'all could talk. Let me, let me pee real quick, just because if I'm going to get this, yeah, I'm yeah. going to make sure... I got to pee, too, y'all, though. Really? All right. So, after, all right, so let me go. Intermission. Y'all could talk about some shit. Ask them something. How about y'all? I, I, I'm not going to lie. I reached out to my dad to find out about Fest Study. <laughs> all right. Y'all go ahead and talk. Well, wait, so do you think that the dreams like have a meaning like of of like Of course, I do, sure. but uh I think you know more about dreams, no? Like yeah, I, but I'm not dream interpreter, but I know more about them because I did exactly what Verenica was saying, like I remember my dreams and every time I look for the meaning. Even in the middle of the night I wake up, I grab my phone because some dreams you just remember. You know what is significant enough Right. For you to kind of wonder, like, what does that mean? You know, mm-hmm. I don't remember any of my dreams. But with the unless water, unless it's a nightmare, yeah. I Is didn't. That weird. No, I didn't dream for a very long time, yeah, especially when I was on drugs. I didn't dream. Then I started like I would wake up. I would dream that I was still doing crystal meth, and I would wake up like, oh my god, I did drugs again. And then it was like, oh. I'm but yeah. and then the when wo- I do remember dreams, I'm like, did that really happen, or was it a dream? Because I don't I dream really, dreams. so it's like it's weird. But usually with water it's subconscious mind or that's why i ask you if the water was calm or it was like more rocky or whatever it represents your emotions mm. oh yeah 
So, mm. but that's just like very general, you know. Like I said, I'm not dreaming interpreter. Or I know mm-hmm. when I dream about fish, I like that, and especially huge ones because it's usually like abundance, you know, or something, something new is going to come out. Yeah. yeah, something yeah. big, like something really that's cool. Awesome. So I love that. I remember because sometimes I have occurring dreams all the time. Yeah. Or like some animal dreams. I have a lot of dreams about snake, and uh, that actually means healing. Really? You know? Yeah. Like See, a, I would think it's like was spiritual. really wrong if I was dreaming about yeah. snakes. I would be because like, it's oh. connected to like you know the snake around the medical. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. That's so dope. I wish I dreamed. Do you dream just, in real life? I daydream all the time. I could zone out in a second and be thinking about whatever. But I won't. I just only dream when it's a nightmare. So to me, that feels like, what's wrong with me? How come the only time I can remember my dream is when something like terrible happened? Like one of the last dreams I had. There is nothing wrong with you. Absolutely <laughs> nothing. You sleep in like silence or with something? No, I usually, am, I usually sleep in silence because I was thinking maybe that will help me dream. Because I used to watch the TV, but then I'm like, oh, that's too much stuff like floating in your yeah, head all night long. What and about I would be negative f- all the time. What about high frequency vibration? What's that? Sounds, like frequency sounds. Oh, yeah. I want to do like a sound bath. I hear that that's like... Can I use your recipe? Yeah, of course. Sound, sound bath? bath? What is that? It's, they you know like play the like, I don't know, they play these circle drums and they all make different sounds and it's supposed to like really just calm your... Yeah, see, that's going to be me. <laughs> Veronica oh. does these uh, uh, singing bowls also. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Because it has different frequencies. The sound is different, carry different frequencies. So you can have like for opening, I don't know, heart check or for different chakras, oh. healing, well, high vibration. Let's go do a sound bath, brother. It's very good, by the way. Very, very, yeah. very beneficial. <laughs> yeah, it's very beneficial. Oh, yeah. See, that's the one I need. I need all of that into my body. Yeah. Like, <laughs> put it on his forehead. Put it on me. <laughs> right. Let's go do like just all the sh- all the shit we could possibly so, do. It ain't gonna hurt us. Yeah. Like, just, right. Good, exactly. Good, good. Did you do anything like that before? No. Like anything when it comes to like some spiritual stuff or this healing stuff? No. Nothing. No. no I got a freaking. I mean, yeah. I mean, I guess. Yeah. I've done. But the I mean, thing don't is that there drinking. was this one girl. No, no, no. Like that one girl. Like they they were doing this like they yeah, had this frequency thing or whatever and I'm not gonna lie for the next two days I threw up I got sick as fuck like they did this thing with and it was like what was it it was this music and then they did these like something and I just kept throwing up that's dude. crazy I that's think crazy, it re- yeah. it's really important that like you you trust who you're like doing yeah. these things I with thought I was gonna die because I really feel like you know some it's the same thing with prayer like they say don't let anybody just pray for you because you don't know what somebody's intentions are you know what i mean you I don't know that. what they're i feel that because i've gotten that on the you. internet before like there'll be random people that are like oh blah 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 about my life or whatever and they'll be like i'm gonna pray for you i'll be like don't fucking don't, pray, please, for, me. Don't pray please, for me please don't pray like, for me please. i don't need you i don't need god thinking you my co-sign right like, exactly <laughs> talk about yourself <laughs> leave me alone really be out of it right. seriously and it's true though because you just don't know what not everybody has good intentions and when you have a good heart you tend to think that the people that exactly. you're surrounding yourself are coming to you with that same energy and it's a lot of times not that which is kind of sad but mm-hmm. no yeah or they don't know what the fuck they're doing like, that part you know, they're just imposters like, yeah exactly so i'll be like look check this out leave it alone like we good but um yes that's why i said do you want me to give you this off um I mean, yeah. Should I just do it off? Yeah, I guess. You right? don't know what's. You know I what never I mean? know. I never yeah. know. Some exactly. Shit be crazy. You don't want to be triggered. You're right. You're right. Whatever. Especially since she asked twice already. So I'm like, you well, know, because what? it's Actually, personal. You it's know, personal, and I respect yeah. it, and True. I respect uh, also the the reading and everything. I, I do a yeah, whole cleansing right. of the space. It might not space. be for everybody. You know. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. For you're you. right. You're right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Um, somebody said, oh yeah, that's Jay- That's Justine, Jamie's sister. So Jamie is always on the pod and that's my best friend. And Justine is also my best friend and that's her sister, but she's just never here as much. Um, she's always working. So we out here. But I think it's a perfect time. I yeah. think it's random that like we don't hang out that often. And this seems to be like exactly in like, line yeah. with what we were talking about last night. Absolutely. It's like everything is like, you know? I don't know. And it was a reason I came here because I don't do. I used to be like impulsive as I've gotten older. It's like, I know I need to. It has to be on my calendar. I got to be prepared. I got to know what I'm going to be doing. And I was just like, you know what? F it. I'm yeah. getting my show. I'm taking this show on the road. We got to go. Yeah. So, yeah. Like, you it's just really random. Much. No. You don't like planes. Yeah. You don't really. And so yeah. for you to just be here right now is yeah. so. It's so dope. Like, I feel like, yeah, it's a really good feeling. Truly. I, yeah. I love it. Yeah, I love me too. It. Here for it. Hello. Thank you, guys. Like, oh, it's just Justine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dead. <laughs> I'm dead. Uh, no, people but people were asking where they could get the books and stuff. Oh, yeah. oh yes. 
So and we'll um, link it in the in the yeah. YouTube video as well. This is available on Amazon. It went to number three on Amazon's yes. new hot yeah. releases. That's nice. awesome. And this one, well, all on Amazon, English, and then there's a Spanish one. I love it. I and love this it. one, my manifestation book, basically. Mm-hmm. I don't know whether you can see it here. Hang on. Yeah, mm-hmm. you can. I guess just hold it. Yes. Oh, yeah. uh-huh. Mm-hmm. It's actually it's in my language, but there is uh, some of my beautiful artwork inside and uh, little quotations. But it's basically for manifestations. So every day I write. You can buy it on my eShop, italosangeles.com. I love that. Mm-hmm. Hell yeah! Thank well, this is there the, is some yeah. beautiful art, by the way, inside. So yeah, your art is honestly super awesome. Like I feel, I Thank feel you. so, um, I feel so like honored to have, be able to like have this Aww. tattoo right here because yeah, so like sweet. and mm-hmm. like I said, so. I had black and white. Wait, I only had one sleeve. I was only going to, in my mind, I was like, I'm only going to have one sleeve. And then I was like, I got a couple little black and white. So I was like, okay, this arm will be black and white. But then once you added color. It took off. I, yeah. I was like, this is going to be color too. Like, mm-hmm. I just loved it all. So I, I don't know. I, I do feel like through tattoos, I tell my journey. I go through healing. I go through therapy. And I also, because I travel a lot, I like randomly stumbling on some random little tattoo shop at two in the morning and, you know, getting yeah. a little tiny something, like f- even a flash tattoo, just a reminder. I get 20 you tattoos were, yeah. with people, you know, like yeah. just just that like that moment. I want to just have it on me forever. So I, I love it. And um, I think tattoo is so great. That's why lately that some people on TikTok have been saying some things to me about my tattoo. I'm like, Shut up. If you don't want tattoos, that's fine for you. But don't, don't. judge me about my mm-hmm. ink. Like, mm-hmm. I love it. It's literally captured the time of your life you are at, you know, like yeah. mentally or what you're doing. So it's a beautiful memories. But every time you look at something, you were like, oh, exactly. Yeah, I remember this. You yeah. Know? Ma- maybe your brother should get tattoos done. <laughs> so he remembers more. <laughs> no, yeah, exactly. He only has, yeah. what, you only have two? No, no. I have you have few, three, right? Three, four. Yeah. And they have that company but see, that. But you remember what you were doing in your life, right? Yeah. Or have you felt? Come on. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, I'm, exactly. Yeah, I remember. Of we were in Miami. Yeah. We had a boys' week because I was trying to get closer to my brother. So I was like, let's go to Miami. Let's have a boys' weekend. Like, you know, get tattoos, go shopping. I wanted my brother. My brother's very shy. So I wanted him to come out of his shell. And I'm, I guess I'm the douchebag brother because I'm like, let's go to freaking Saks. Let's buy you some Balenciaga. Let's get you some brands. Like, let's get you tattoos. Like, you're going to be that dude. And like, you know, he's, he's still, but you wear it. I love when I see you wear it because I'm like, <laughs> it's just so not him like he's mm. just so like but quiet luxury back. like quiet, quiet luxury, luxury is that's awesome the new but term. he's just not that you know flamb i can't ever see Ido being that loud like you no, know but it's all black like that. bro like, ugh, Look, like that he, would be cringy it's a little little logo like this tiny on the shoe it's that, a little, and that you know, works that's him subtle swag yeah exactly like subtle swag like he just gives off like yeah you but know, still, stoic like you said if it wasn't for me pushing him in that direction i feel like i feel like we all need like you know she Come out your her. shell a little bit. I get pushed in bit. my direction. Like I push him. Like I feel like we always need those people. Those That's true. those those people that push us in the direction. And I feel like it has. I remember when yeah. we were still sitting in your room and you know what I mean? I was like, bro, get a fucking car, dude. Like, buy that shit right now. Like, get a fucking... And then I feel like from that, and then we went and got guns mm-hmm. together, and then we went and freaking <laughs> got brands, and just different that's things. Dope. Like, bro, we we bros, we you know? Right. We, that's my we, bro. We supposed to do this. Yeah. Yeah. Put that shit on, bro. You no, know? yeah. <laughs> His favorite color is green. They have that company really? now. They have that company now that allows for you when you die to oh, remove shit. your tattoo, and they take the skin, and then they they frame it and you can hang the tattoo of your past loved one on the wall oh my god wow. hold on that's a hold on all right that took a <laughs> took a straight okay. straight. and with that no. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note we gotta go out here and live we gotta live some life because if we don't we never know your no. tattoos might be on someone's wall <laughs> right so you like, can in, you're like your family can inherit the butterfly they even attached my friends butterfly. start taking dibs on my tattoos they're like well <laughs> you know what i want <laughs> I oh know. my gosh! Damn. Yeah, just sell mine to the highest bidder. I'm. <laughs> <laughs> I put mine on eBay. Bitch. <laughs> <laughs> You're crazy. No, but I love this. I want you guys. Yeah, I want. I want to do more stuff with you guys. I definitely want to. Cool. You know, sure. I want. I want to hear what's what's part of the the, the off camera stuff. And I want to get tattooed and you know open Go up talk Europe. about some stuff. Go to Europe. Let's do all this. I love it. I, I appreciate you guys so much. And again. This was perfect. This is perfect timing. Yeah. This is, you know, God God knows why he does stuff. And I feel like this is a great time right now for us. So, um, no. I mean, I'll let you guys say your last words, cause obviously. But um, I appreciate you guys so much for being yeah. part of the podcast. Thank you. And you're Thank obviously you so forever much. invited. But, yeah, go yeah. ahead. 
I want to say thank you so much to you. Thank you for your time. Thank, thank you for you. allowing us this space. You know, a lot of the times people uh, become bigger in their life and in their passion and in their purpose, and they forget about other people that are pushing forward a, a story or trying to help others yeah. too. So I appreciate the, the fact that you didn't. Thank so, you. Thank no, you. of course. <laughs> no, you guys have an amazing story. And I, I take inspiration from everywhere and honestly advice and like I'm just trying to be the best me I can possibly be so if anyone has any advice for me no matter who you are hey hey we here as long as you you it's out of love and it's out of positivity I love it so thank you guys and thank again, you so much I'll see you guys next time thank you bye just low Esa niña no se aguanta quiere todo porque el pussy sabe a fanta si la dejas por pendejo se te casa dale todo dos de lengua y una horchata Si te alcanza, I'm the shit, huh? Are you catching what I'm going for? I pick up. Same bitch I always was, now I'm just richer. I'm about to shake it up and check the Richter. This a sticker.